Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, I gotta post the link somewhere. Um, uh, available comments. Uh, link. Can't post links in there. Uh, eh. uh, eh. Let's see what we're gonna do here. Google Live Events. Edit. Paste. Let's see. Going live now. I don't do that. Oops. Well, I don't know if it ended up in there or not. No viewers. Hmm. Let's see. How do I find out if I'm live? Um. <clears throat> oh my god, now. You on watch page, cool. Hey, I'm live. Look at that, it's me. Uh, Comments, there ain't no comments. Say something. Here's the goddamn link. Add a moderator. I don't want to do that. I don't want to the time either. Whoops. No chat. Okay, so it done. Ah, what was that? Ah. Can't figure out how this works at all. Just can't seem to do it. So I got one viewer. Yay! Somebody's gonna have to post a link someplace because I didn't do all that shit. So I can't figure out how this fucking thing works. How do you put your link in the comment section when there's no comment section? Original. What's an original? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Larry. I don't know what an original is. Uh, I hit everything. Especially Google. I hate Google. I had four viewers now. We got three. Mm. Anyway, I wonder what links is. You know, I can see what links is. Links. YouTube page. Uh, video embed. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's right. I could embed the damn thing. I forgot about that. Yeah. I wonder if I can figure out how to do that again. Let's see. Here's the Vlogger Dome page. Let's see. Where would I put the embed? Let's see, we got say Vlogger Dome TV show. Let's 
subjects. Probably the best place to put it is up here. See if it works. Say that. It's the bathtub guy, how you doing, Gary? Yep, just just posted the link right now for you. Did you uh, do your intro yet, or are you gonna wait till they come? Uh, good point. Logger Doom, Logger Doom must have quite a delay because I said that about 30 seconds ago. Wonder if that isn't some built in thing they put in there so they can censor us. Well, I just got out of the. I just got out of the hospital um, on Thursday. Anyways, I just got out of the mental hospital recently, so. Yeah, occasionally I'll do that when I travel uh, to the city so I can uh, not pay for a hotel, stay a couple days, and then check myself out. Sounds like a cruel prank to play on Halloween. That's a good point. We are all the suckers, Gary, and we're stuck here until we die, like you said. It's very profound.
we, we've had really bizarre weather too. It's been like 75 here. Makes you want to jump back in the pool. You still like clean, you still clean pools on the side. Um, Gary, people are saying they can't hear your audio in the live in the live stream. I'm not sure if that matters in the recording or not. They maybe have to log back in, but be less than five minutes because um, otherwise it will stop recording or you can just start a new hangout or something. Hey, hey Fleora, can you post the link to me and I'll test it out for Gary? All right. I just tested it myself and I can't hear any odd audio. Just uh, log back, log out, and log back in. Go to the X at the top and leave. I I hear the Can audio, Fleora. I I hear the audio, and I have a piece of shit computer that's ten years old. You hear it, do you? All right, sorry. Yeah, we still see you on, on our end, but I know what you're saying, though. It's kind of, um, you can't, you know, your hair's, you know, you can't adjust yourself during the broadcast is what you're saying. So, Bathtub Guy, can you hear Gary? Because I can hear you in the stream, but I can't hear Gary. So, did you say you could hear him? Maybe he misunderstood because it's just your audio and uh, I could hear bathtub guy and the other person in here making noise. Oh, you did? So it could be a country thing. Yeah, that's not sure. Yeah, even um, old fan says she can't hear you. So When you first started the uh, live, you were heard, and then after the two-minute mark, you went you went mute. You, you know, your lips are moving, but then you don't hear anything. I wonder why it's doing that.
Hey, Fleoro, is he going to pop back in, or is he switching four months? I didn't get what you said, but I think he's just going to refresh. What's up, everybody? What's up, Jeeves? You been out of town, man, for the last week? Where you been? Yeah, I explained that to Gary. Uh, one sec, Gary, I'll be back in the room in a sec here, and then we can start a conversation. He had to reload. Can you hear me, Juicy? Copy. So where you been for the last week? I appear to be back in a stupid room casting. I don't hear anybody. No, uh, we, we hear you. Right, now Should I be working now. Yeah, well, we'll see. I've got to figure out whether the. Uh, wonder if I can still moderate the room. Probably take away my moderating powers or something stupid like that. Yeah, I can't ban people or anything, right? That's stupid. We can still get rid of them though. Once you block them, they will automatically get kicked. It's it's a it still works. It, it'll kick them out once uh, enough people block them. Yeah, well, I know, but what's the fucking point? I mean, why should I have to... Why am I a guest in my own fucking room? Can you, uh, can you see yourself, though, now, or not? Uh, I don't know if I can or not. Can I? Yeah, I see myself. Well, I can't see myself in the icon. Yeah, I don't think you're a guest, right? Because... Um, can you stop? Is there a stop recording button? Yeah. So you're not a guest, but it's, it hasn't got eject, has it? Yeah, I can't kick anybody from the room. Stupid. There's still the option to ignore, and according to Bathtub Guy, if a lot of us ignore someone, they get kicked out. Well, it only takes about two people to to get them kicked out. Once two people ignore them, they're gone. I don't even have an ignore button. I have a hide broadcast. Um, when you click... Don't, when you click don't click on that. Yeah, go ahead. You yeah, don't click on hide broadcast because that, that's what moots you. Yeah, well, I didn't click on it. I'm just saying that's the only option I have for other people is to hide... Present to everyone or profile. That's all I get is options. Down next to the person's image in the little boxes down there, they have an arrow. And you can arrow down to uh, to ignore. And once yeah. I'm just saying there is no uh, there isn't any ignore. That's what I'm saying. That's what sucks. I don't got anything. I'm saying if I click the little arrow on other people's icons. It just says hide from broadcast, present to everyone, or profile. And it has muted, muted. <laughs> yeah, great. I can't even mute them. Ugh, God. Google Plus sucks. Seemed to work better the first fucking day I was in here. Ever since then, it's gotten worse. What the fuck does present to everyone mean? What the fuck does that mean? Why would some asshole write something like that? Present to everyone. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what does that mean? <sighs> what does original mean? I'm getting some dopey thing up here that says original. 
I'm not familiar with that. Sorry. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it switches something like the user, maybe. Uh, original. I don't know the original. Maybe I should hit original. Original. Let's see what it does. Original black and white smooth. Oh, it's just some kind of camera crap. I'm good. I'll go with black and white or something. Maybe I'll go with warm. I could use some warmness. Yeah, give me some warmness. That's better. Ah, fuck. Well, well, I'll have to see how it goes. But I mean, I can't kick people. It just takes all the fun out of it. You don't worry about it. You usually don't kick anyone out, anyway. So. Yeah, I do. I do all the time. I do. Not on G plus. Yeah, I do all the time. Yeah, he he has a few times uh, recently here. Uh, Fleora and I will jump in right away, though, and ignore them if they uh, are asshats. Okay, I'm just saying, I just don't like it. I don't like being powerless. Anyway. So who the hell is Mr. Ed again? Gregory, I don't know who that is. I don't trust him. <laughs> Wilbur, <laughs> I almost, almost was talking, Wilbur. I made a noise. You look like an old Peter Frampton. There you go. Thank you, Wilbur. <laughs> uh, fuck you. You look like an old dead horse. I used to watch when I was a kid. Mr. Ed lived a long time, I think. I think he lived to be like 40 or something. Or maybe it was only 27. I don't remember. Probably doesn't matter. He went to the glue factory. Yeah, well, I don't think he did that until after he was dead. Kind of, kind of like Boxer. You know. Kind of like Boxer and fucking Animal Farm. Yeah, no, I think actually Wilbur saved him. So I don't think he actually did. I think he was going to go to a glue factory and then Wilbur saved him. That looks like a racist image to me. You better change that or I'm going to have to kick you out of the room. Looks like that chick. How, how, how do you know that ain't my grandmama? I'm saying that looks like a racist image, and so I'm going to kick you out of the room. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide you from the broadcast. That's what I can do. <laughs> it's that chick from Gone with the Wind, Gary. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just a bad picture of her, obviously. He's just playing games. That hide broadcast is pretty awesome. I like that. Yeah, well, it works. I wonder if I can do anything else to him. I can hide him from the broadcast. I can bring... Oh, I can eject now. Cool. So all I have to do is hide him, and now I can eject him. Cool. Oh, yay. I got my powers back. More info. I don't need more info. Okay, Gary's got control now. Excellent. Yeah, awesome. I feel much better. So I just have to do the hide thing first. Hide, and then I can eject. Ooh, that, that I can handle that. Two steps makes it more fun. We can thank Mr. Ed for that. Yeah, thank you for... Well, thank you, racist Mr. Ed. Ooh. Well, so far, so bad. So, how you been, Flyora? You don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you. You haven't done any broadcast. I thought maybe you and 
Daisy Wolf eloped somewhere or something, and they're, you know, you know what the hell was going on. Um, I didn't even talk to Hazy yesterday, so we wow. usually talk every day. <laughs> yeah, but you don't do it in a way that anybody else can join in, which is funny. Ugh. No, I sort of miss um, you. You used to do rooms uh, every day, now you don't do rooms at all. Yeah, um, I could still do them, it's just a matter of... It's really late for Hazy when I'm, you know, when I'm around and um, my housemates don't want me to be too loud at night, so I'm not sure. I have to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, well, it's okay. I'm just saying because I don't really have the time either. I mean, getting up at 6 in the morning is no good for me either, so. Um, but, yeah, anyway, it was nice. I mean, once in a while, I guess it would be good. I did do the Vlogodome one just, like, last week. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, you were doing them every day is all I'm saying, and then all of a sudden you stopped doing them, that's all. I'm actually very active on the Google Plus community, uh, the page that I created, the group with Appleism. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of reading articles and, you know, YouTube videos, watching them and posting stuff there. Yeah. We've got like 50 members already. Yeah, well, whatever to that one. You are kind of a, uh, <laughs> you know, you are kind of a, whatever you call it, you're like a Facebook, Twittery, Google Plusy person. Uh, I need all that shit. It just keeps me active and involved, and yeah, mm -hmm. and it makes me feel better too. Yeah, I understand. I just mean that it's all too corporate for me. Feels way too, uh, yeah, whatever that word is, corporation thing. I don't like corporations. Well, they consider them a person now, right? Next to our wonderful, illustrious Supreme fucking court. Yeah, which is insane. But yeah, it's a person you can't sue for anything, you know. Person that has more rights than we do. Yeah, just recently when I did do a hangout, uh, YouTube asked me for my phone number, so it's a bit like really strange. Did, yeah, they, did, uh, did it ask you? Yeah, they always ask it for phone numbers. They're asking for my mobile number, and I don't have a mobile phone. But yeah, I mean, you had to give them a phone number just to sign up. Now, you know, to get to, to be able to post a video over 10 minutes long, you have to give them a fucking phone number. Yeah, I don't have a mobile phone either. I've just got a landline. And then they only let you have two accounts per phone number, which is really bogus. So I had to use another phone number <laughs> to verify my account. This is, you know, kind of awkward. Um, so, yeah, it's just really irritating. So I don't know what's going to happen when I try to sign into some of my other accounts because, I, you know, I ran out of phone numbers. You might have to give them your parents' phone number, as fucked up as that sounds. Isn't that fucked up? Well, I know, but then I have to be there, but they have to call you, and you have to get the code number. You know, so they call you on the phone and give you a number, and you have to type the number in. Yeah, your parents might kind of freak out if they uh, weren't uh, aware of that, and they got that call. <laughs> They'd be like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> well, yeah, I and mean, obviously it's not going to do me any good here for them to get the call and they'll get the number wrong and then I won't have the number and that won't work. I already kicked you out of here, Vanilla. No, it wasn't Vanilla. It was the other thing I kicked out. That's right. Horse head. I don't know what Vanilla's up to. Might as well call him a horse shit instead of horse head. Yeah, that's true. No, anyway. So far, so shitty. Well, I'm waiting for the proper time to bring up your Einstein is wrong um, postulation here. We don't have a, yeah, Mr. Natural's not here, etc. Yeah, there's no point. I mean, I don't want to argue physics because people hate that, but 
I, I know I'm being quite obnoxious and aggressive about it, but I think that's the only way to do it. Maybe just quietly act insane and no one will pay any attention. <laughs> you know, so, you know. I mean, was Einstein really wrong about the velocity of my glass of scotch here? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, he was wrong that it's, you know, warping space-time. <laughs> yeah, he was wrong about that. <laughs> well, with these mainstream, like you said, physics is like a religion, so these mainstream fuckers won't come out and, and admit it. And, you know, they won't uh, admit that his uh, postulations on this topic were wrong. Yeah, well, you know, they won't admit that, that they've chosen to accept answers to questions that uh, violate the whole, what is it, Occam's razor? I mean, they're they're going for the most preposterous answer rather than the simplest answer. You know, instead of trying to make the simple answer work, they, they're they sitting there desperately trying to make the crazy answer work. Yeah, you know, they really, you know, it is a it is a religion. I mean, when you hear these people talk about their multiverses and all this shit and their string theory crap, and it's just like, holy fuck. I never realized how crazy that Michu Akuku guy is. Aku. Ak Why the fuck can't I say his name? It's not that difficult. Uh, Michu Akaku? Akaku. Yeah, Michu Akaku. Yeah, he's full of shit, man. I didn't know he was a whole string theory nut. Yeah, I read one of his books back in the 90s. It was called Visions, and half the shit that he wrote about for the 2000s never came true. The guy's a fucking retard. He's a fucktard. Yeah, he was saying he's just so self-promoting. I mean, he's another one of these guys that, man, they just love being physics celebrities. He wants to say the most austere things that come to mind just for the publicity factor. I agree. He's a total fucking uh, camera whore. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's kind of, you know, I don't know what, you can't really say anything about it, but it's, it's just kind of pitiful that this is what science has come to. What would, I mean, how do we remedy it, though? Would you would you want some like um, some academic um, um, I don't know institution that has to oversee this stuff, or how would you remedy it? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. You know, how how do you create a real honest hierarchy? Um, but that's sort of what it comes down to. I guess I'd have it so there's some sort of uh, credibility engine, you know what I mean, like from the bottom up where, uh, you know, you have different things vote, like the public sediment versus professional sediment plus, you know, people in your field's opinion and somehow you correlate all that stuff together into a rating or something, you know, and you're, <clears throat> you know, you're below, you fall below a certain rating and then you have to shut up for a while. I don't know, something, I mean, it's just, it does seem like there's no credibility to who becomes a talking head, you know, on a particular subject. You know, beyond them, people saying what people want to hear, you know, that seems to be the only standard. Tell the assholes what they want to hear. Uh, I see this shit on fucking CNN and you know MSNBC all the fucking time. Exactly what you're stating with the talking head bullshit, and there's no there's no substance behind any of the uh, this, the postulations they're making on national fucking news. They're just saying shit and being inflammatory on purpose. Yeah, it's uh, you know. <clears throat> like I guess it is a tough, tough. You know, it's hard to come up with some sort of, you know, real perfect way to create a legitimate 
Well, I don't know if it is that tough, actually. I mean, you know, it's like the whole political thing, right? I mean, you really should be obliged to answer your critics and, um, you know, in some sort of real way, you know. You shouldn't be able to hide, and certainly physics should be open to challenge through something other than, you know, some obscure academic website that you could post articles to that nobody reads. I wish people like you could uh, could be mixed in with those talking heads and, you know, just uh, put them to task, so to speak, and, you know, give the other side's perspective on this shit. Yeah, I just wish there was some kind of real dissent somewhere. You don't have any anywhere. It's all vanilla. As vanilla says, it's all vanilla. Vanilla world. Hey, what happened to Fly Aura? She already pussied out. <laughs> I want a fucking Neapolitan world. Yeah, well, a rocky road or whatever. Something. She use. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Let's see out. Uh. But I guess it's you know, Sunday morning for her or something. I don't know. What the fuck is it? Well, yeah, it's sometime during the day. Anyway. <clears throat> Starting to wonder where the fuck Mr. Natural is at. Well, you know, probably has a life and such. Um, you know, might not be available till 1.30, I think. At 10.30, I think, is closing time for him or something. So, his time. So, he won't be here till 1.30. Did you ever consider doing a uh, event in conjunction with him, like out of his shop? Yeah, well, the next Blogger Dome episode, I did an interview with him for the next Blogger Dome. So that's sort of an event. No, I'm looking forward to seeing that air, too, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we did the education subject. It'd be interesting to see you do kind of a kind of a meet and greet though in person, you know, kind kind of like a book signing where people show up and they fucking have you do whatever meet and greet. Yeah, well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, I just had a vision of me just you know with ink on my ass and I just put an ink print of my ass, you know, on a on you know that's how I signed the book. You should write a book, though. Uh, yeah, you know, with all the ideas you've had throughout the years, you should compress them all into one, you know, one tome, so to speak. Yeah, I just don't know why I don't do it. I mean, it's not like I'm not a decent writer when I put my mind to it, but uh, even with this physics thing, I'm really having trouble writing it. I mean, I'm having trouble, you know, explaining it. In, you know, you know what I'm saying in words, written words. No, I have to, uh, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, yeah, I do seem to be getting dim-witted just when I need my, you know, I need to be able to get my act together. But, yeah, I don't know, writing is difficult. I guess it depends on the subject. I guess I'm also kind of frustrated with people, so I almost don't have the patience for it. That's a nice thing about writing, though. You put it in the in this tome, and it's it's there for all eternity for everyone to see. You know, theoretically. Yeah, I know. So are videos, though. Theoretically. 
tell somebody decides to flag you again, and you know, fuck, you know, back in '09, that shit really pissed me off. Yeah, my old fans archiving it all, so they won't be able to destroy me. I'll live forever on video. Of all the shit they have on there, I mean, they, they have videos of some really disgusting shit. You know, they, you know, they were pulling you off. It made no sense. Yeah, well, you know, I do piss some people off, that's for sure. You know, that kind of world. What happens, people get very defensive when you try to expose the fucking truth. They want to live in their little blissful fucking existence. Well, I guess that's part of it, but, yeah, you know, it almost seems like they, yeah, it's, you know, like a kind of, I don't know whether they take it personally or what, but they seem to be awfully personally invested. You know, a lot of this can be compared to the, uh, you know, the fucking fundamentalists, the, the fucking theists and shit, though. That same paradigm exists in so many different arenas here, e even with the Einstein principle, like you said, with Einstein being like a religion, etc. Yeah, you know, I mean, people are really, well, they're all nuts. I mean, look at the Santa Conabod stuff. It's just so funny. I mean... He knows what uh, totalitarianism is. He knows what thumb screws are, but he doesn't know what an A is. You know, he's not sure an A is an A. <laughs> you know, you're just saying, yeah, you're not sure what this is or what that is, but you know what totalitarianism is. Yeah, you know, but he doesn't know what uh, imposition is or responsibility. These are all undefinable, ob obtuse concepts, but he knows what totalitarianism is. So clearly it's whatever he doesn't like, he knows what it is. But if you don't like it, well, I don't know what it is. I mean, that's just so, you know, if this is what people think are, is philosophy, you know, my words mean something, your words are invisible. I mean, what the fuck is that? I mean, how you can't even argue with that kind of crap, you know, that's just too far gone. It's like trying to argue with a, with a fucking theist who, who uh, claims that dinosaurs run Noah's fucking ark. You know, it's pointless. Yeah, I don't know too many of those, but yeah, that's that's really gone. <laughs> you know, perish tyrannosauruses. It would be kind of funny, though. Yeah, it's the tyrannosauruses. Two by two. A couple of Baronosauruses and some of them Ceratopsises. Yeah, because none of those fuckers were going to get uh, hungry and try to eat Noah and his whole fucking family, right? Yeah, well, the whole thing is wacky, you know. He made a boat with no windows. Did we hit land? I don't know. <laughs> Send a bird out because we can't figure it out. There's no fucking windows. No doors. We can't look out. No. Let a bird loose. He'll tell us where we are. The whole concept's a little wacky. Hey, there's Wayne. Yay, Wayne. Yay. Hi, Gary. Uh, you know, how you doing? Uh, you know, struggling. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, well, you know, another day, another irritation. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. I got stung by these lousy bees this week, which was kind of irritating. They're little, like, you know, I finally found them. They're little tiny, tiny little fucking, like, dirt bees or something. But they really got a vicious sting. <clears throat> but they're not dying too easy. I sprayed them a couple of times, and they're still alive. I, mean, I can't cut the grass. I can't do shit. I mean, they're just vicious. Going anywhere near them, they get all crazy. 
like Africanized or something. I, mean, I never saw such small bees. I mean, so damn small. <sighs> no, they're probably from New Zealand. That's probably what they are. Probably some sort of New Zealand baiters. I just saw that movie Candyman again last night where the bees attack that black guy. So it's funny that you mentioned bees. I don't know. I guess so. They cover the guy in honey, and then supposedly the bees attack a guy. Will, will a bee even attack you if you're covered in fucking honey, though? I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I guess it's all fake. Yeah, I don't think I'd watch a movie called Candyman. It's just, yeah, no thanks. Kind of in that Halloween mood, though, to watch a bunch of horror, horror flicks. Uh, what, uh, what about you, Wayne? What do you think of that movie? Uh, I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't watch that either. Candyman, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah I... I, I I don't I recommend that. wasting your time, so at least I agree with you on that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying I don't really connect with things anymore, so I don't really watch movies or TV or anything. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to do something. So, yeah. No, I watch movies. They're all old movies, though. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't watch one. Yeah, I've been too busy lately. But I do like watching movies. Do you watch them on a uh, TV or your computer or what? Yeah, well, I got this new computer screen the guy sent me, and said it's really nice, too. You know, it's really big. I never had one of those big, like 24 inches big, cross thing big. So it's kind of nice to watch movies now. But, yeah, they're not even good quality, you know, video captures. They're, you know, just online kind of quality movie. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. But I've been watching just on my digital picture frames, you know. I mean, it's, I just watched them on my little frame. It just plays over and over and over and over. No, I'm glad I'm glad he finally came through on sending sending you that. Cause we were talking about that for a while now. I'm glad it finally got there. I don't think they were talking about it for quite a while. He just mentioned it last week, and he sent it to me in two fucking days. Yeah, no, I yeah, that that is pretty quick. I mean, for for me, you know, oh, it's been like a week, is what I'm saying. So a week seems like forever, is what I was saying. So yeah. but it came out good. I'm just saying, yeah, I got it like Tuesday, so you know, it's quite amazing. Very nice and such. So I have to send them something special of some kind. Did they ever come through on your smokes though? Yeah, unfortunately, nobody's been lately. Everybody's the only one who ever came through was Flyora. She's always pretty reliable. She says she's going to do it. She does it, but all these other fuckers don't. Adam, I wonder if that's the old Adam guy. It's probably not the old Adam guy. Because he'd be Adam something else. I wonder what Adam's up to. Anybody ever hear from Adam Simpris guy? Oh, what the hell he's doing? He was always very good to me too. He sent me computers and shit. Oh. Uh, Maircraft guy. Okay. Mike isn't working. No, oh, cool, he did. That's weird. Mike isn't working. I wonder if it's a Google Plus thing or something else. Yeah, I haven't really talked to you in a while. I just keep insulting you lately, but you know. Uh, good to see you, sort of. Not maybe, possibly. An icon without a mic. And she now can click on cogwheel. What the hell? 
Move your mouse to top of screen. Click on cogwheel. Oh, I ain't doing that. No, I was trying to help out Meyer Craft with his mic there. Ah, I see. Cogwheel. Yeah, I guess I have a cogwheel somewhere here. Uh, where's the cogwheel? Well, I'm missing my cogwheel. <laughs> where's the cogwheel? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, I don't need to play with that now, though. My mic is working. Now, apparently. For now. It's such an old thing, though, you know, the fucking cogwheel. I mean, you know, they were they were in clocks originally, you know, those self-winding fucking clocks, and we still use it today. I don't, I don't, yeah, the symbolism, man, it goes back centuries. Yeah, I don't mind that. I kind of like gear work. It's kind of a good, good symbol for me. I like it. Yeah, I agree. Even even just this whole physics thing, I kind of like the idea of the you know they they talk like there's no clockwork universe you know, but there really is. I mean, I think it's actually a clockwork. You know, I think the, the, if people saw exactly how the universe really works, they're going to be so surprised because it's going to be like all like rusty and clunky. You know, it's like you know, like at the real you know the real base level, it is just, you know, it's just a bunch of mechanical things, there's no special forces, you know, it's all just crap banging into a crap, it's like all pool balls just bouncing around. You have the, you have the deist, the deist though, he'll say that, you know, some, some god put it all into motion, and I don't like that shit either from them, I'm not saying that you're, that you're stating that, but they will take advantage of that and, and say shit like that. I don't think so. Not when I explain how the whole universe is running out of gas. You know, it's just shooting photons into space, and it's all those photons are energy, and it's dying. I mean, all that shit that we see at the end of the universe is probably already evaporated. You know, it already went into the nothing and went poof. <laughs> you know, just went poof, 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 poof. All that shit popped. You know, all that stuff on the end of the old universal bubble. You know, it's already, it already, all that shit already popped. Well, it goes, you know, it's really a paradox because they, you know, they're telling us, you know, they're telling us that the universe is constantly expanding, but I'm not buying that shit. Yeah, well, apparently they base it on nothing. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, we just, you know, we just, you know, for the for the shit to be going as fast as they say it's going, the redshift would have to be all the way to radio waves. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no way that this that they're claiming that some of these uh, universes, I mean, some of these um, galaxies are moving uh, eighty percent the speed of light. And they're like, fuck you. If something moves 80% the speed of light, it's going to be more than a little bit redshifted. It's going to be, you know, like I said, it's going to be shifted to FM radio. Adam, I think your mic is working now. Say something. Yeah, well, I think it's not quite working. So it's almost like working. It has the word working in it, not quite working. It does have the word working in it, but quite working. So you're all being incredibly boring and such. Where the hell's old fan such? Where the hell fuck is everybody? Wayne, did you want to say anything? No, he's disconnected from everything. <laughs> you already explained. I'm having trouble connecting to anybody or anything. <laughs> I am on Google Plus, so I can't connect to Google Plus. He's that. Yeah, that's about right. I don't know. No, I'm just sitting and listening. No far. Soaking it in. Yeah. I um I volunteered to do some voiceovers, Gary, for the uh Vlogger Dome episode three. Ah, excellent. Excellent. 
So yeah, Amanda's going to send me something to do. Yeah, great. Yeah, there's a couple other people too that are helping out now, so that's good. So you know, eventually it'll get interesting. I mean, the next subject's going to be the right to die, so that should inspire a few people too. That's a good subject. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten my work done yet. <laughs> this, this episode is going to be really thrown together at the last minute because I'm way behind. Do you make special videos for this, or do you just re-edit older ones? Or yeah, I, yeah, they're all new videos for this. I mean, you know, and I have to put all that graphic crap on. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, I had had the extras. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Not that you know. I'm, there's a good conversation between me and Mr. Natural, but I gotta edit it. And, you know, it's gonna take me some time to do that. Blah blah blah. No, I really do have a lot of shit to be done. Well, if you want help with some editing, I'm, I'd be happy to edit some stuff if you want to send it to me and tell me what you want done. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the yeah, tricky that's part, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do this, do that, do this, do this, do this, do that, do that. Yeah, I've got a whole list. It'll take me longer to make a list of the stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not fair. But in future, you know, definitely want to do that. Well, I want to do something. you got to turn your mic off. Yeah, well, you got to turn your mic off. Or else. Anyway, um, where was I? Yeah. Yeah, but I'll keep you in mind. Um, you know, because I do want to do something, you know, some more interesting stuff. I just, you know, I haven't gotten around to it. If you need any any uh, tasks uh, taken care of as well, yeah, menial, menial or not, I'd be willing to help out too. Yeah, okay. Well, you can send me some cigarettes, you stupid scumbag. You can go to the mental hospital and then steal some cigarettes and then send them to me. Uh, I can do that. I'll try to get you some cigarettes. Um, before your next broadcast on Saturday, if I don't come through, if I don't come through, um, then you know, block me from here for life. I don't need to bother doing that. I really don't. I mean, I you know, I know you're come on. I know you're already in trouble with the law and all kinds of issues, so you really don't have to do anything. Well, <clears throat> I'll see what I can do. Though I I live close to to my reservation, so they're pretty they're pretty cheap over here. All right. Well, I'm just saying, just don't, don't, uh, whatever. Blah 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 blah. Put yourself out or anything. That's all. I might even make a video where I go to the reservation with my camera and buy them. Cool. Yeah. See if the see if there's like really Indians at the Indian store. That would be funny. Be a bunch of Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious myself. Yeah. Let's see, who's dog icon? Philip. I don't know what that is. And some Ro guy. Ro? Ro? I don't know what that is. Looks cranky. I don't like the Chris thing much. Like whatever that is. I don't like flags. Flags are irritating. Would you say that cigarettes kind of uh, give you a give you a connection, though, uh, Gary? I don't even know what that means. Do they give me a boner? No, I don't know. I like cigarettes. Yes, yeah, cigarettes make me happy. Yeah, they do. I mean, it really is nice. I go outside, I sit in this chair, have a cigarette, and it really is goddamn nice. I really do miss real cigarettes. You you wanted the the Pall Mall or the Winston's? I forget. 
Well, the Pall Malls are cheaper, you know, so get the 100s, get the long ones. Long Pall Malls. Send them a pack of Marlboro Menthol Smooths. I'm smoking one right now. It's like smoking Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, well, I, you know, I know what a menthol is. It's okay, but I like a real cigarette. <sighs> no, the menthol smooth's not like a regular menthol cigarette. It's like smoking spearmint bubble gum. Yeah, I just don't know if I want to smoke spearmint bubble gum, okay? I want to smoke a fucking cigarette. I want a raunchy, cruddy, smoky, smelly, stinky cigarette. Send us a pack of Tops Tobacco so he can roll the biggest, fattest cigarette he could possibly. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want no throat, right little home-rolled loose piece of shit. I want a nice no, manufactured, that's, that's the only thing I like about corporations, is a nice corporate cigarette. So you want like a marble red, like hardcore throat hit, taste it for two hours. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, I smoked Winston's for 40 years, so I guess that's what I, yes, I like a corporate cigarette. Yeah, I used to work with a guy who used to smoke Pall Mall unfilters, and one day I was like jonesing for a cigarette, so I bummed one from him. Man, talk about the head rush. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, it's the nicotine, man. I, you know, can you give me a, a Marlboro and I'll just break the filter off and smoke it, right? Because, yeah, there's no, you gotta get, you gotta get the, I can't, the way I can't stand is to make the damn thing so short now. I mean, you buy these cigarettes, I don't know how people can afford it. It's little tiny, they're little tiny short cigarettes. Little pussy cigarettes. It's terrible. It's such a ripoff. They made sh cigarettes shorter. I just don't know, you know, they charge us seven million dollars for a pack of cigarettes and they're shorter than they used to be. No bad. But anyway, enough cigarette talk. It's just irritating. <sighs> yeah, it's kinda of, it's kinda of like self induced torture when you don't have them in front of you. I understand. Yeah, well, and I guess I get over it. I mean, I'm all this, you know, I'm all this, like, big on psychology. Yes, right. And psychology. Like, totally yeah, yeah, so totally yeah. owned. Totally yeah. owned. Gotta fix that feedback. Gotta fix that feedback. Mr. S. Yeah, Mr. S is Mr. Feedback Guy. Well, it's gone now. Mr. Bathtub Guy does not like Mr. Feedback Guy. Apparently not. Anyway, well, so far we've accomplished absolutely nothing. Excellent. <laughs> yes, the tradition is being upheld. I would change the name of the room to just blow out your brains now. Would you ever consider going to a Burning Man, Gary? Well, I do have my homosexual moments, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it does look awful gay to me. I mean, what do you do at Burning Man with you know compare boners and shit? Uh, drugs, I guess. Yeah, right. You get stoned and then you play with your pee pee. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Sure. You could have your own uh, antinatalist uh, thing camp, though. Well, that is true. You get to have a whole. You get to have little clubs and stuff, and you like TPs and shit. Oh, it's just so Basically, scary. it's like taking a lot of Molly and hanging out with Madonna for about two days. Yeah, well, I did do that in a dream. I hung out with Madonna, and she was decapitated, which is really cool. So I was like at Madonna's house, and she was decapitated. So she was just a head on the ground talking to me and shit. And it was like total. I was totally okay with it. I was like, yeah, cool. I'm talking to a decapitated Madonna. And it was like totally okay. 
That was a fucked up dream. I mean, I totally bought it. Like this was, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, she has, yeah, she's, she's just a head. It's okay. And somehow my brain said that was all right. And I like woke up. And I was like, how the fuck did I fall for that? I mean, how did I spend a whole fucking dream hanging out with Madonna and not comment on the fact that hey, you got no body. You're just a fucking head. Anyway. No, it was fine. I don't want to think about her body these days. She's like 60 fucking years old. Yeah, well, so am I. So. That's still banger. Yeah, it's just so, yeah, yeah really. Uh, like, Gary, you don't have saggy tits, though. Well, I, you know, whatever. You know, it doesn't sound... I don't necessarily have to fuck those, do I? No, I don't. So, yeah, there's other things I can do. <sighs> Whatever. As long as you got something to keep you occupied. I guess if it's dark enough, it don't matter, right? Yeah. Kind of um, scared when a girl wants it dark. Uh, you know, it makes you wonder why she wants it dark. You know. I don't know. It doesn't make me wonder too much. It's just sometimes women's is a little bit insecure and such. Or maybe they just don't want to see what the hell they're fucking. But either way, I don't care. I really, I couldn't care less. You know, it really doesn't matter to me. Lights on, lights off. Who the fuck cares? As long as my penis gets into vagina eventually, I'm happy. They're trying to hide those uh, two rows of teeth in their, in their vagina, though, and they shut the light off. Yeah, well, whatever. I can take a few teeth. I ain't going to bother my dick any. Fair enough. Well, right through that. Hey, fucktards, uh, Philip, etc. Um, are you folks going to talk? Probably not. Well, probably not a useful question. I have a bunch of gray spaces. I wonder what the gray spaces is. That's S. <laughs> like they don't even have icons. Yeah, it's all the icons are disappearing again. That always happens. Do I still have my scotch glass on your end, though? Yeah, you do when you're not talking, anyway. Yep. Spin, 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 spin. That's got to be an old movie that's in your collection, though. You know, the the Shining. Yeah. Here's a classic. It, it kind of has antinatalism as a subtext as well. You know, he tries to kill his son. He realizes the, you know, the wrongs of his ways, so to speak. I don't know about that necessarily. <laughs> but, but, yeah, it does make you just say, what's this? What's the point? Everybody's an axe murderer at heart. So, fuck it. Yeah, no point in living. And such. Yeah, so I mean, if you're not a homicidal pedophile, you're probably going to be. So, I mean, yeah. Seriously, death is the most beautiful thing life could ever produce. Well, I don't know if that makes any sense, but whatever. The most perfect sense is no sense at all. Well, that doesn't make any sense either, so fail twice. The world is an enigma. Oh, I hate the word enigma. The word enigma. Oh, enigma. Hi, nice to meet you, Gary. I'm Mike. I have no idea how I ended up in here, but... Okay. Cool. <laughs> I usually know how I did things like that, but it's okay. Ideas, guy. That must be Bandit. I haven't seen Bandit in a while. 
Cool. I wonder what he's doing nowadays. I'm um, sure he's. I'm sure he's still doing cocaine and uh, and doing uh, shots of of um, adrenaline and shit. Crazy. And lying and lying. He's always he's doing a lot of lying. He's a very good liar. Compulsive liar. Anyway, somebody's doing feedback. I don't like it. It's probably that uh, guy with the weird icon. The judge of Juju by now. Juju. <laughs> yeah. Down corner muted Robin Stack. I don't even know who that is. Down corner. Oh, no, that's, that, that's me. Oh, down. Well, it just says down. I don't know why you have a last name. Anyway, doesn't matter, I guess. Who the hell are you to mute people, though? That's rather obnoxious. Yeah, the open mic was creating the echo. Yeah, well, you got to ask them to close their mic then. As you first ask them. If it was me, go ahead and close it. I'm on a cell phone and I'm trying to play a video game right now, which is kind of. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I don't hit the mute on my mic. Yeah, well, you know, I work on that. But that is pretty good. I, I mean, I got to say, it's pretty good multitasking on your cell phone. Video game and Google Plus at the same time. I can't even do that on my computer. I'm on a G Plus, which has um, a quad core in it, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty good, but yeah, be careful you don't burn yourself. Pretty good. Yeah, the technology thing's getting pretty good, but unfortunately there's nothing to do with it because they're blocking everything now and banning everything and just showing you Google ads all day. I really hate that. I really hate the whole internet. Like, you know, whatever you, every every video you watch, they ended up giving you a bunch of suggestions related to that video. It's just so irritating. I mean, we all should be on the same internet. It's gonna be really fucked if that net if that net uh, neutrality shit gets passed, where they want to throttle your speeds for certain websites and shit. Yeah, well, that's not really the point of it. The point of it is just people should have to pay for what they use, which I don't have too much of a problem with. I mean, it's all alien technology if we look at it, you know. We can we can feel like we're running shit, but when it comes down to the bottom of it, it's just fucking aliens. Yeah, well, that doesn't make much sense either. But whatever. St. Peter was a myth. Well, whatever. You can turn your mic off now for a while, and everybody will be happier. Have a vote. Uh, who's feedbacking more now? Should have a feedback icon. Ah, there's Bandit Guy smoking a cigarette. Ah, it's already cold over there, huh? Alaska's getting cold, huh? We're having a nice little hot spell here, huh? Uh -huh. Fuck. Can't even hear you. The microphone sucks even worse here. You have to get a cell phone. <laughs> you have to trade in your computer for a cell phone. Yeah, Betsy. Yeah, Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. Oh, he's got a microwave oven now. I can see all the bandits' cool stuff now. He's got a microwave oven. Let's see. Yeah, microwave. Paper towels. I think he had paper towels there. Let's see where else to go. We've got a whole knife collection. Ooh, yeah, Ben, it's a chef and such. 
Gotta cut up the blubber, like the whale blubber. You got like a whale blubber knife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. A can opener under under installed underneath the cabinet can opener. Pussy. Peace. Be a real man. Real men don't use electric can openers. Let's see what else has he got there. Range hood. <laughs> yeah, he's computering in the kitchen. Oh, that's funny. Probably the living room too. The living <laughs> kitchen room. All right. Oh, remember that. But I should talk. Sorry, I only have one room in my house now too. Yeah, living is shit all. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, you know, I have the monopoly on shitholery, or the copyright, or whatever the thing is. I've got the original shithole. Let's see, I don't know, does he have a dishwasher? I don't know, does that look like a dishwasher over there? I think a dishwasher, maybe. I don't know. I definitely don't have a dishwasher. Okay. Or dishes. Or dishes. <laughs> <laughs> paper plates. What are dishes? Uh, yeah, paper plates, man. Paper plates. Hey, just out of curiosity, did you ban me from the fucking tiny chat room? I tried going in there for like a, like three months and I couldn't get in. It kept like recycling and I was like disappointed. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I didn't do that, no. But they, I was banned by different ISPs, so that's been, that's why I'm starting to do this Google Plus thing. It's just because, yeah, Tiny Chat was getting blocked by, you know, I guess it was mostly Comcast. But I don't know what company is doing it, but it's fucked up. You're censoring me, man. Yeah. There's still feedback. It's still the same guy with the feedback? Did you have had your cell phone guy? No. I've had my mic on mute for the longest right now. Okay, good. Thank you. My microwave is not reacting towards the hangout. Cool. Yeah, maybe just Bandit. Maybe Bandit's just feedbacking on his own video or something. No, I'm, I'm actually muted. Okay. Well, I don't know how exactly. I'm not hearing the feedback on my end, though. You're coming in pretty freaking clear. I heard the feedback on my end. Yeah, well, obviously I hear it. Or I wouldn't have said the word feedback if I wasn't hearing feedback. So, obviously I'm hearing it. Yeah, it's gone now. Yeah, it does sound, it sound better. But I mean, I did a lot of drugs in the 90s, so I mean, I'm not sure if I'd hear feedback if I even heard it. Uh, yeah, or maybe you already have already feedback in your brain, I guess, yeah. So you wouldn't know the feedback from the feedback. Something like that. Seems like a more difficult platform to manage. I guess, that tiny chat. I don't know. It's probably about the same, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, at least you didn't have to go to New York, so that's good. Uh, so anyway, what was that? Yeah, it's good. I may have to go sometime this week, but I don't know. It's like I never know. I think I'm only going to find out last minute, and that's just going to how, how it's going to be. But, yeah, sorry, is my mic bad? I should have asked first. <clears throat> uh, it's not bad. It's a little loud, maybe. Okay, I fixed it. Maybe. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, well, you know, see what happens. Um, you know, like I said, I'll try to get my stuff done the next day or two. 
<laughs> you know, so I was supposed to do shit today, and I just, you know, it was a nice day outside, and so I sat in the sun, and then I did some kind of stupid shit, and I did some other stupid shit, and I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't get anything done. I didn't get anything done today either. I'm going to try to get some animation done uh, and other stuff tonight. I mean, I have a bunch of things planned, but it's just, I, I've just been completely sidetracked this month, so everything is going to get done at the last minute. Um, I'm, tr- I'm going to try... I'm kind of aiming for the third, as you know. I mean, if that's if it's not possible for you by the third, that's you know that's fine. But I'm gonna try to get everything in on the third. You know, make sure everybody else has everything in by the third. Um, <clears throat> yeah. That'll give me at least a couple of you know. I mean, a couple of day, you know days more is fine. But you know that'll give me enough time to edit. I mean, last vi- last episode took three edits, so I'm just a little nervous that I'm going to fuck up and it's gonna need an extra go around again. Yeah, well, I plan on doing better than that, but we'll, like I said, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I plan on it, but, you know, nothing's gone very well. I go to make my little segments, and the cat interrupts me or some other kind of bullshit. And, you know, I don't know, nothing's, you know, just haven't been, um, uh, just haven't been terribly functional lately, which is, yeah, I, I haven't either, though, honestly. I mean, this this whole month just kind of knocked me for a loop. And I, I mean, today I meant to do so many things. I woke up early. I tried to motivate myself in all kinds of different ways, but I just just was kind of turned off most of the day. So, you know, it happens. Yeah, uh, it's irritating, though. You know, it, yeah, it, I, I had plans for today, too. It's like today was going to be a really good day. So I didn't have to work, and I didn't have to do anything. And it's like... And I just wasted the day. So, yep, same yeah. same boat. And I've got in the next three weeks, I have to give. Uh, I, they're not huge deals, but I have to give two lectures. I have all this writing. I got. I have to start a new job. It's just too much. So, right to die is next episode, right? Because I'm. I sure am. I sure am ready to make that argument. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really am. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good subject. Yes. Yes, it will. And yeah, I have to find somebody to argue with. Yeah, you know, the only person. Th- this is the problem. I mean, I mean, I know, I know. This is, we've said this a million times, but yeah, it's just I keep. Everybody who I keep thinking of, or just you know, is basically somebody who just has slight disagreements with you. It's not somebody on the other side, and I, I guess that's partially. I mean, I you know I just don't watch anybody that I you know, disagree with to such an extent that it's the complete opposite. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to pick any of those people, you know, just because I don't, like, I so don't care about what they're saying. Um, the only, I mean, I was kind of, you had some pretty good talks with uh, anti-bullshit man about the right to die. Do you think he'd be, I know he agrees with you, but it might be kind of fruitful. Oh, yeah, he might be a good person to have a conversation with, too, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of good choices. I mean, even Wayne's good for some subjects too. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the morbid, well, atheist, I, well, the morbid atheist would be a good one for maybe the right to die too. You know, because he's sort of passionate about that kind of shit. Yeah, a lot of good choices, I guess, with agreement people anyway. Yeah, I think it's kind of nice, you know, like the last episode that there was, you know, several different conversations happening. I think that's that'd be a good thing you know, um, where possible in each episode, you know. It would be great if you, we could have somebody you agree with and disagree with in each just little side battle type type situations, so to speak. Well, I'm just saying the point of this, uh, the whole point really, though, is to try to get to a point where you really are doing the argument thing. I mean, the whole point is to argue the argument, <laughs> you know. No, I agree, but until we get to that point where we have people, you know, really wanting to have those kinds of arguments. I mean, it is kind of nice just to kind of mix it up with yeah, a well, kind I, of variety, but yeah. Yeah, but well, maybe I really ought to try doing the arguing with myself thing, too. You know, I ought to just yeah. devil's advocate thing. I really wanted to dress up... Hang on, Bandit, I'll be done in two seconds. I really wanted to dress up like a stereotypical, like, PTA bitch, um, you know, and have, like, kind of a mock... Thing back and forth with you this time, but I just I just I didn't have time to do that kind of writing, and even though it's mainly improv, I mean I just yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Bandit. 
<laughs> no, I, no, I was just going to say there's a, there's a website. I'm going to click it over there. Um, the Gishi, it's been around for like two or three years. It's almost like a, a like a stick in. And if you guys join there and set the room up, Gary would have like the controls like he did during the game. It might be a good alternative. Anyway, that's why I had to say sorry. Yeah, well, look at the name. What the fuck is that? Kargishki. It says that I'm banned permanently and I've never even been on the site. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm doing something right. Is it Kageshi? Yeah, how the hell did he get a link in the chat? I couldn't post links in the chat. That's irritating. Well, yeah, that's a, that's almost like um, a stick am. It's been around for like I think. What is it? This I don't. What is this? I don't. What is this? I don't. That's a sentence. I like the little kitten wearing the watermelon helmet, though. That's pretty good. Uh, what else is there on there? It doesn't look like this is a properly uh, American website. Yeah, it just keeps on saying I'm banned. Any anything I do. No, oh, there's another Jack Nicholson clip. Not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Hello, welcome to Kagegeshi, home of all sorts of rogues and ruffians. <laughs> yeah, this is like an, an anime website, wasn't it? Like years ago, isn't it still? Well, I think so, but um, yeah, whatever. Kageshi, definitely. No, Sounds I'll cool. keep it in mind, Bandit, but I have my suspicions that it'll suck. Yeah, that's my suspicion. Probably going to do all kinds of evil things to the computer and whatnot. I like the uh, level of detail I get on uh, Gary's camera or whoever's talking. It's really, to see you full size is really interesting. Yeah, I don't really care for that myself, but, you know, whatever. Well, but I'm constantly able to, like, look at your parlor behind you there. I mean, it's kind of fascinating to me. Yeah, well, that's why I don't find it very fascinating. I guess this would be out of out of all of them: Tiny Chat, Stick Cam, Blog TV. This would be the best one to do live art on. Not that I've done that much, like painting and sculpture on this format, but it would since it's. I mean, it's the it's the biggest view that I've seen on one of these live stream sites. And the quality is not awful, so. Yeah, obviously the frame rate sucks, but. Um... You know, that's what you're. Yeah, you know, I mean that's the difference, really. You know, they really cut the frame rate down. So I mean, the image quality is better, but there's shit frame rate. Yeah, that, well, that's that is true. But you well, can definitely have more of a show with this one than say blog TV. Yeah. Oh, like that. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Not too sure yet. As long as the spam does not ever appear over here, I'll be fucking happy. I can't stand spam shit. Well, you know that Google Plus is going to have to finance this shit eventually, so eventually there's going to be ads and shit, you know. Yeah, that's going to be the thing. They're going to be, you know, you're going to have to sign up for something or give your email away and then, you know, whatever, but hey, that's, nothing's for free, right, I guess. Well, I'm just saying that obviously in the Google tradition, you know, they're giving it away for free, get a bunch of people to join up, and then they'll bombard you with bullshit. Well, the files are enormous when you download these Google Plus, you know, conversations, especially when they're five, six, seven hours. I mean, they're fucking huge. So yeah, there's no way they're going to be able to keep giving this away. I mean, and it is really kind of, it's complicated software next to, you know, next to the other shit. Yeah, well, not even that. It's just it's just not accessible to, like, a group of people. Like, that's why I threw that other thing out there just out of, you know, whatever, because it's not like there could be 500 people in here and they could be all watching us and, have, you know, listen to the conversation. That's what I think that... It, 
just was great about uh, Stickam. I didn't even have to sign in. I could just actually watch the room. And if I signed in on a, a Saturday night and wanted to listen to Do Not God, I could watch the whole thing. Yeah, I know. Just You're be educated. Right. You don't have to sign in to watch it this either. I mean, you can go to vloggerdome.com and the embed is playing, so you don't have to sign in. Yeah, you can also just watch it from the channel page, yeah. and you can watch it from the feed just in the like a normal YouTube video. Yeah, likewise. So that's kind of a bogus complaint, but... Um, yeah, it does seem like the audience size does seem to do, you know, 40 viewers, right? 40 ain't too good. But whatever. I mean, considering the content so far, I guess 40 is miraculous because, yeah, I wouldn't watch this. <laughs> you know, I fucking want my money back, damn it. Um, yeah, seriously, Paul Mall and Burning Man. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. So far, it's pretty fucking lame. That's right. It's, I'm conceding the point. It's, it's the like equivalent that, of going and paying ninety dollars to see a guy named Skrillex. Yeah, well, I wouldn't do that either. So I don't really know. The, I don't know. So I, I guess I'll concede their point. But yeah, either one sucks. But at least this was free. So far, I mean, well, mostly free. I mean, I did beg a little bit. Hey, Gary, uh, just just to throw something out there, I'm gonna post that. That's actually um, another one right there that you can start a room at, and it'll stay there for as long as that you keep it, and you have control over who goes in, goes out, and it's pretty good. I looked at these things because after stick game died, I fucking like rolled around and looked around a lot. So anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you obviously didn't find any rooms there that were any good, or you would have said, "Hey, there was great rooms in there." Well, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't think there was any good rooms on Tiny Chad. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, except for me. I used to be really good back then, the old days. Uh, but yeah, I suck now. Oh, it looks like exactly the same website. Yay! Cool. They're all made out of like by the same company or something. Let's see. Uh, choose a username. I can't do that. Gary, are you wearing a zebra snuggie or are you just a badass? Yeah, no, it's a blanket with a hole in it. But yeah, it's pretty much the, pretty much what it is. I invented. The answer is I'm a badass. Well, whatever. I'm a who don't give a fuck ass. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. Sort of an old tradition, actually. So I just pulled it out for old traditional sake. The kind of a private joke, maybe. I don't know, something like that. All right. So I'll bookmark this thing, but I'm sure this website is certainly probably trying to invade my computer entirely. Anyway, so thank you for the nice spam links. Uh, Yay. It's always good to keep up with the virus uh, combating, so it's good to get some new viruses so you can fight them. Keep your shields strong. Keep, keep your Jedi powers honed. Anyway, we're getting feedback again. Cell phone guy. Probably his call. Not me. All right. Well, I'm just gonna blame you. <laughs> it just seemed convenient. Okay, I'm gonna leave it open for just a little bit so you hear what I sound like and what the feedback is. Well, when I'm already when I'm already getting feedback. That probably isn't a great idea because then I'm getting double feedback. So that's no yeah. good. There you go. Now I'm closing. Okay, it. double feedback. I get your point. Yeah, maybe it's just the idea sky or something. It sounds like a submarine or something. It sounds like submarine noise. The 
somebody, somebody's doing it. They kill them somehow. Oh fuck! I lost Gary's uh, video. No, you're still there. Sorry, I see. You. Yeah. I wonder if it's you. Maybe I'll just moot people and figure out who it is by mooting them, right? I could do that, right? Yeah, it's dangerous though. Okay, what's this S person doing? I'm not doing anything. Okay. Look at him again. Okay. All right, it's quiet now. Hey, Wayne disappeared. Cool. Ah, uh, his camera farted out. Ah, oh, back. Okay, gotcha. You may vacation. It's okay. So let's see. Down corner muted ideas. Boy, that's rude. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, there's a group chat. Wow. Forever I Wolf Films joined the group chat. She left it and then she joined it. Cool. It did what? It says you left it and then you joined it. That's what it says. I did no such thing. Yeah, it says you did. Lies. Google lies me. again. Yeah, it does. I think it does. It is a liar. Google is a liar. So anyway, we have to have a conversation about something here. Let me think. People suck. The planet pretty much sucks. Matter sucks. Matter's not even matter. It's just stupid photons. Let's see what else. Uh, Let's see. Alien yeah. technology and how it's fucking us in the asshole every day and we don't acknowledge it. I don't know. You think I would notice if it was fucking me in the asshole, but yeah. It's I alien haven't technology. Known. You just don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't really mind technology. It's you know, I just don't like the people controlling it much. I mean it's just disappointing that it's all the same shit. No, it's like I was talking to Von Hilton earlier about how the world would oh, be so please. much better. I don't even say that <laughs> word. Please. No, please. how the world would be so much better if Nikola Tesla would arrange oh, shit instead Tesla of was a douchebag. He was a fucking lunatic. He Jeez. was a lunatic. He was a fucking genius. He was a lunatic. Why? Because he figured out Mars was sending out radio frequencies... Uh, yeah, that's probably a, that's it. probably a good one right there. Yes, that's that's probably a good enough definition of lunatic right there. As soon as you say the word Mars, you're kind of done. Mars is really really boring. Earth is stupid, but Mars is fucking boring. Mars was our original home planet. Oh, whatever. Yeah, sure it was. And then before that, we were from like. Some other point, like Plutio or something. No, before so, we went to so, Mars. So you're, yeah, you're before, before, that, before well, that, you guys were from Alaska. That, yeah, before that, we were riding around in that hot dog truck. You know that truck that looks like a hot dog? No, yeah. Xenu's Galactic We were driving Space around Cruiser. in that, yeah. And still, I don't remember before that. So where do you think we came from? Ah, uh, we came from a DNA molecule. Which was spawned from? From goo in a swamp. Which was brought here by? Oh, endless regression. This is an awesome, awesome conversation. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah. The, you know, the planet is covered with crud. The crud got eliminated, and that's all there is. There is no from someplace, okay? So you don't believe in aliens? I know, that's right. I don't believe in aliens. Very true. Hey, 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 well, wait, where did, where did, where did, where did aliens come from? And then where, where did they come from? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, they evolved. This, this, this is, what do you mean they evolved? Alien aliens can't evolve. They have to come from somewhere. Don't you know how aliens work? Aliens don't evolve. They come from somewhere. So we went from shitting in the sand to... Crude weapons of steel, armor, and bronze, and then yeah, that's what happened. Four billion years of evolution. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and then and then in the last in the last two hundred years, 
four. In the last two hundred years, we went from shitting in a fucking hole in the ground to open plumbing to space shuttles and this stupid phone that I'm talking to. Well, it's Evolution more than don't work that fast. They weren't shitting in a hole in the ground two hundred years ago. They're doing a little better than that. But um, you know, what's your point? I mean, do you really think we didn't we didn't evolve on planet Earth? Do you really think that human beings were exported here? to a plant that just happens to have other apes on it that have 99% of our chromosomes. So it just happens that we landed on a plant that just happens to have apes on it that have 97 to 99% of the same genetic code. That's because they were here once before. Or that's because we fucked uh, pigs and they turned into gorillas. <laughs> Was that how it worked? Yeah, we fucked a goat. A balls and theory. Like <laughs> you know, is that how gorillas were made? You know? No, anyway, enough of that conversation. That's just stupid. Yeah, stupid. Mars is a waste of fucking time, though. It's a giant, barren fucking desert. Who the fuck cares? You know, I don't know why we're there staring at fucking rocks. Yeah, frozen desert. <laughs> yeah, frozen desert. Yeah, it makes it even more fun. Oh, fuck, I'm in the desert. Oh, and it's cold as fuck. Yeah, I was going to say, they could come up here and actually uh, spend, like, the next 20 years and, like, fucking see this frozen desert. It's yeah. fucking hell up here. Yeah, pseudo-Mars. Yeah, Bandit's already living in pseudo-Mars. I think the movie Total Recall is the only fucking reason that we sent, our, that we sent probes there back in the 90s and 2000s. Well, the whole stupid thing is, is we sent a stupid probe there in, like, whatever, 82 or something, and it already did all this shit. It already took pictures. It already picked up dirt. It already did all that crap. It's like they just keep redoing the same shit over and over. Oh, they might find life in those rocks there, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Gary. My technological piece of crap shit out on me for a minute. Okay. So, what you're saying is in the last 200 years... Oh, please, let's just do this again. We already did this. No, I'm not over it. But in the last 200 years, our evolutionary track has like had a jump start that is faster than any evolutionary species. I, I don't know. Why, why, why bother arguing with you, okay? Yeah, we, it's, we didn't do it in the last 200 years. We did it over a period of 10,000 years. That's right. We started off with nothing, and then slowly but surely we discovered the truth, and as you discover more facts, you can gain more facts, and that's the way fact collection works. You gain a lot of facts, and you start accelerating how fast you can gain facts with your facts, because you invent things like microscopes and telescopes. And then you have access to a whole bunch more information. But there is a point where you're going to run out of information. And the only story to tell is, oh, I see. We eat shit, we fuck shit, and then we make shit up <laughs> about Martians. That's uh, primitive. No. That's seriously primitive. Well, uh, whatever. Seriously primitive. is It's seriously the truth. So, you know. Whatever you want to live in a fantasy, go ahead and live in it. I'm just saying, there's no. But I mean, the fantasy world is the in, in the whole galaxy that we. Oh, uh, whatever. I'm not, like I said, seen. I really don't want to do this. I'm not going to waste my time talking about a whole galaxy of absolute dead stone cold quiet. There's not even a cell phone making any noise out there. What about drugs? Do you like drugs? No, that isn't the answer either. So good night. See you next time. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, and that's the argument that's always brought. Like, okay, well, all those years that nobody ever came up with all this stuff, and then from, like, the late 1800s to how we are now, the technology has advanced so much. Yeah, but we can we can actually trace from where the late 1800s did up to now, and... I don't know, it's like a retarded argument for somebody to make, like the last 200 years is recorded history. It's not like there's any doubt about what happened in the last 200 years. So it's just kind of silly to even bring that up. Exactly. To make an argument, you have to go back like 10,000 years and then make up a story, you know, but you can't make up stories about 200 years ago. 
Yeah, I had a I had a I had a pager in 1993, and now I have a cell phone. Uh oh, aliens. Yeah, I mean, phew, you're really going to have a hard. That's a hard sale. How do we get from there? The aliens had to make the cell phone. We couldn't invent that out of the radio. <laughs> yeah, you can't make a cell phone out of a radio. Aliens must have done it with pyramids. Yeah, and it's always like obscure things. Like people don't like look like look at the Atari twenty six hundred and then like look at the new Xbox or whatever and go, Oh wow, you know, aliens. They yeah. they always look at like crazy yeah. shit. Aliens aliens done it. There's no way we could have figured that out on our own. You know, if aliens are really doing it, then we should have the fucking holo, you know, holodeck by now, not a fucking Xbox, just saying. Well, it depends on how retarded the aliens are. You know, if they're retarded as humans, then yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't that be disgusting if there were aliens and they were just like humans? Ugh. Fuck. <laughs> be like, oh man, why the fuck did you shithead show up? Is that all you got? You got fucking. Well, we possibly think that maybe Jeebus died. 2,000 years ago in a hor horrible holocaust of mortal scenery. <laughs> yeah. And uh, stuff like that. Do you have any cool stories? Yeah. Yeah, they like come, they, they travel they like a couple of billion, a couple of billion light like, yeah. <laughs> Drop, <laughs> drop. <laughs> they showed up with the Koran. Yeah, they showed up with the Koran. And like the, the woman was in a burqa. Oh, that would be just hilarious. Yes, we're. Intelligent life in the universe. Yeah, yeah, that's what we are. Yeah, like, that's my like whole thing about like the ancient alien thing. They're like, oh yeah, well, uh, Egypt had to be created by ancient aliens. These aliens, they traveled billions of light years, and they taught them. They taught people how to stack bricks. <laughs> no, no, no! How to make the most of inefficient building ever built? I mean, fuck! It has 17 cubic feet of floor space, and it weighs nine zillion tons. Yeah, it's like the worst house ever. Oh, it only takes 200 years to make, and it's got you know 400 feet of 400 square feet of floor for floor, floor space. <laughs> I mean, fuck. What good is that shithole? It's all roof and no floor. So, yeah, I really don't understand the pyramids at all. I mean, you'd think they'd have more living space in it, right? Like, to have a condo in there or put, like, a skyscraper inside the pyramid or something. But, fuck. It's just goddamn bricks. I mean, there's just no living space in the damn thing. And no windows. Yeah, well, whatever windows they got are like 658 feet long. <laughs> yeah, well, that's really good. The sun comes through it for like 43 seconds a day. Ew. Just imagine the smell. <laughs> yeah, dead people and no windows. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. It just you just you would think like that when the people were making the pyramids, they like would have said to themselves, "Whose idea is this?" I mean, this is really dumb. <laughs> you know, let's sneak away. You know, there's got to be. Let's go. Let's crawl off the end of the earth. <laughs> you know, let's go find the edge of the earth and crawl off of it and see if there's some place more interesting to live. Because this place is stupid. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not pretending like I know how the fucking ancient Egyptians did all that bullshit. But I mean, to assume that this. Brilliant life form came from a galaxy fucking billions of years away, flew in on a spaceship and said, Hey, stack some rocks. It's crazy. We'll show you how to make a triangle ox. <laughs> yeah, triangle ox. It's really cool. Yeah. It's triangular. It's dumb. But yeah, no, it doesn't make much sense. Nope, nope. 
Nope, nope, nope. And then I was watching a show, and they were like, oh, yeah, well, this is the ancient Egypt battery. And it was just, like, pottery where they could, uh, you know, throw some vinegar in it and stick it like, a copper wire. And, oh, yeah, it gives out two fucking two watts of energy. And they're like, okay, well, where's all the machinery and where's all the wiring that kept this battery ran? And just yeah, not- well, yeah. It probably it was probably just some sort of anal probe or something, right? This is, like, something Pharaoh used to, you know, do a little extra whatever, when he was sophisticating himself as he was whacking off or something, he decided a couple of watts of electricity were just what he needed. Uh, you know, people are just so desperate for a fairy tale. Well, that's, that's exactly what it is, too. Everybody wants to hear the wonderful story about how it came from nothing and all the stuff, and you're absolutely right. And it would be nice if it did happen that way, but it just didn't. Yeah, it's a scuzzy story. We're still just pretty much flatworms that can sing and dance. And we don't even sing and dance all that well. Yeah, and, and why, when I watch those like ancient alien shows or any shows, it's never about like, like how, like, all right, well, what about people that died of famine or died because they got a cut and fucking, you know, died of bacteria? It's always, oh, yeah, well, I built a pyramid and it killed aliens. Wow, we got some new visitors. <laughs> got some Norwegian guy and Tween Pro guy. Yay. And we got a ton of feedback. Ooh. <laughs> so somebody's got to close their mic or something. But I have no icons. No icons. It's really irritating. Some guy keeps coming up, not speaking, saying anything. I think it's Twin Crow guy. Yeah, your mic is working. I think it's him. Can't quite tell. Pretty sure it's him. So anyway, I'm going to work on that. <clears throat> Happiness exists. Let's see. Uh, my handle was Obby. I don't remember that. You probably don't remember. That's right, I don't. Wish I could talk to you, but my audio isn't set up, and i got to sleep. Take care. Okay, Jill. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I don't remember you guy. Yeah, you'd be I don't remember you guy. Sounds like you've touched a lot of lives though. Who what? You've touched a lot of uh lives. Oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether I touched them in a good place or not. It's a kind of bad touch. Bad touch, bad touch. You meant them touch me. Ew. Touched a lot of wives? <laughs> yeah, touched a, yeah well, that would be better. Yeah, I would have would have liked if I had done that, maybe. But no, no, no. When they think about you, Gary, they touch themselves. Well, that's true, though. They've even said it out loud sometimes. They say it to me out loud. Anyway. <sighs> I am kind of here. Whatever. Somebody's feedbacking still. Let's see. Who do I mean? Between Trogan? Uh, somebody's fault. Somebody's fault. Somebody figure out whose fault it is. <laughs> yeah, somebody find out who's creating feedback. Uh, oyster guy, no reason doing it. No reason to ask me. Between 12 guys, probably guilty. Oh, yeah, that was the one. Okay. <clears throat> He's got to fix his technology. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in like, uh, I don't know, two months or something. Do watch some of his videos, but they do still ramble on and on. No offense, it's just kind of rambly. I mean, just not focused enough for my brain. 
Hey, Band, are you still in Rhode Island? <laughs> yeah, Rhode Island. That's pretty funny. Uh, look at the way he's dressed. There's no way he could be in fucking Rhode Island the way he's dressed. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no way you could do. You know, it's, it was warm here today. I mean, there's just no way you could. It's almost hot today. No, um, um, I actually uh, recognize your voice. You were one of the guys that used to be in Von Helton's room a long time ago. I, I forget what your name is now. But, uh, no, I moved to um, Alaska probably about six, seven years ago now. And, uh, yeah, I've been there for that long. Yeah, he's a homicidal axe murderer, <laughs> like all the other Alaskans. That's why people go to Alaska, you know, they're either like pedophiles or wife beaters or mass murderers, right? Who else moves to Alaska? Embezzlers. Embezzlers. <clears throat> but yeah, you gotta be guilty of something to move to Alaska. Well, I'll be honest with you. I moved up here because I had uh, got a job offer, and uh, I stayed up here for two years. A uh, job got canceled, and I met a lot of cool people, and I got ended up getting another job from the people that I met up here, and I stayed up here. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that most of the people there are criminals, and you know it. The, yeah, there's a lot of shady motherfuckers up here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they'd be hiding from justice. Uh, Do a lot of uh, places up there uh, take checks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where you need to go, beardy guy. But there's all kinds of crooks up there. You love it. They give you like uh, two thousand bucks a year just for living there. I from what I heard, is that true? Yeah, but they give it to you in like a bad check. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, everybody just gives everybody bad checks. Well, honestly, from uh, like early September to late, I would say May, you can get away with probably having like two or three thousand dollars and live happily. Yeah, but just think how much it costs to have anything cool imported. Yeah, but yeah. When I I spend my most money on, uh, <laughs> you'll probably laugh at this because you don't smoke anymore, but. My biggest expense is uh, cigarettes, Marlboro. I spend yeah. a lot on those. Yep, cigarettes are horribly expensive everywhere, though. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I spend, I'm sorry to interrupt, I spend like $14 a pack. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but just think, everything has to be imported, you know, where they, where this guy, yeah. you know, the guy lives, everything's got to be imported, you know, and it costs money to import all that shit. I mean, I have to put it on boats and trucks and this, and yeah. I mean, a lot of hassle. So you probably pay twice as much for everything. Hey, I can't hear Bandit now, cool. No, I was going to say, like, uh, cigarettes and booze are the two most expensive things. Besides that, I mean, you can get food, you know, depending on what you want to eat. You can't order a Domino's, but um, cigarettes and booze are really expensive. Besides that, it's not too expensive, to be honest with you. Yeah. Except for the expensive parts. Yeah, well, whatever. But you do, you know, the pay is pretty good if you can get a job, so I guess that's the difference. You don't have to work too often. There's a lot of snow days. But I wouldn't want to live there. Too cold for me. I don't like snow. Anyway, where were we? I was gonna, the other bad thing is that there's uh, 
not too many women up here, so when you go out, it's kind of like a bunch of idiots and whatever. But that's why I come on here. I got Gary. He's got long hair, got good cheekbones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <sighs> so, but yeah, you know, that's the other thing. It's just no good. Um, the women are kind of rough too. You know, the ones that you do have up there are kind of, <laughs> you know, a little on the skanky side. Yeah, my yeah my uh. My pickup line is like, hey, nice tooth. <laughs> yeah, well, just saying, they've been kind of used. <laughs> you know, they're around the block and such. Funnily enough, though, there's some like uh, women that come up here with their parents or whatever because they think it's like whatever to come up here. And some of them are really attractive. Um, obviously, not like going to like, like Miami or California, some shit like that. But yeah, well, I'm sorry. just saying that they're probably very expensive, though. <laughs> yeah, right. So the pretty women are probably really expensive in Alaska. Oh yeah, absolutely. well, not even that they're really expensive. It's just like a fucking uh, a feeding frenzy. So. Yeah, it's way too much. Too much work. You have to bribe. The bribes have to be too high. Oh, fuck it. I like women cheap and desperate. Am I feedbacky now? Probably, mostly, maybe, possibly, but I don't think so. I think you're okay, actually. Nifty. Yes. Cool and such. So how you been? I don't know. I've been on Earth for a while, and I don't care for it very much. Hey, we have something in common, then. Yes. That's Yay. one thing. Good to see you not. Well, see your icon anyway. You have a really cool icon. I like that. Did you draw it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that blue with the round head thing and everything. I, I gave it I just you know, I gave it to everyone on the internet and they just decided to use it or use their own icon. It's pretty neat. Oh, okay. I didn't know you gave it away for free and such. Pretty cool yeah, of you. Yeah, that's why you see it everywhere. Ah, okay. Yeah, pretty yeah. generous. Yeah. Advertising it on my own screen name. <sighs> yes. Or ween. Which yeah. sounds a little bit weird, but whatever. I'll get over it, I guess. So how do you like the um, Google Hangouts compared to Tiny Chat? I don't know. See the thing is, I couldn't join your tiny chat for. I I tried a couple of weeks and then it, I just gave up and I decided to join a couple of weeks ago and I still couldn't do it, which is weird. I guess you mentioned in a video of yours that it was something to do with an internet um, cable provider that wouldn't allow you to get on, or if that might be the case, I don't know. Yeah, apparently there was some, you know, whatever. Yeah, some company associated with some company associated with some company was blocking shit. Okay. Yeah, that was weird. I couldn't join your room. It was yeah. a weird coincidence uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry about that. No, it's okay. I mean, obviously you're going to be joining, uh, doing the Google Hangout thing instead from now on, right? Not from now on, no. Just like 50-50 maybe. Oh. So I can only join two times a month. <laughs> I guess. But say that, that's the that's the good thing. You could get a nice break from me, you know, every exactly. two. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Well, you could always open a room too. You know, you could do it. Yeah, I'd get like you know, I'd have the two people join in and have an argument with each other. Yeah. yeah. Which well, would be me in my. Uh, I mean, I guess I can. Use another computer and you know talk to myself through the computer and have all the feedback and stuff, you know, noise up everything. <laughs> well, it might be like listening to one of your regular videos. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, that'd be too redundant then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could hear myself be annoying to myself. That'd be pretty. Yeah, fun. well, that would be okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did have to start somewhere. So yeah, that's where you start. You start by talking to yourself, and then other people show up eventually. 
Yeah. I suppose that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, you have to make friends and such or something, or make enemies. You either have to make friends or you have to make enemies. Yeah. Right. So I see, I, I've noticed something about Google Hangouts is that you, you can look, you, it changes depending on who's talking, so why am I not showing up on the screen right now? That's weird. Because you don't have any video, uh, but I see you. Oh. So you don't see you, but I see you. Oh. I don't, I don't see you, I just see your icon talking. Oh, so it doesn't change on my screen, it just changes on everyone else's screen? I suppose. Oh. I don't know. I'm just asking. I haven't been on this before. Well, so. wait. Yeah, no. What you do is you probably have clicked one of the icons below your. You know. You know what I mean? Those iconic things that are sitting there. So if there's one that's highlighted, click it again so it unhighlights. Oh, and yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That's pretty nifty. <clears throat> yeah, that's the word for it. Nifty. Lots of nifty yeah. features. Yeah. You know. Lots of nifty bullshit. Yeah, I'm trying to bring in those old-fashioned words back into popularity now. Yeah, why, why are you doing that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I just thought I'd ask because, you know, it seemed like a stupid thing to do, so I guess I thought I would ask because the old words suck, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of intimidated. I don't want to show my face because I'm afraid it'll be so big and so ugly when I show it. Yeah. Well, it can't get much worse than mine. Oh. Uh, but I, I like the green. You kept the green. And that's just pretty neat. I like that. Yeah. Well, I'm actually warmer than usual, right? Yeah, I'm warm right now. I could switch to, uh, let's see, enhanced. I wonder what enhanced is. Maybe I'll go with enhanced. Mm -hmm. No, I think I'll yeah. lighten. No, I won't go with that. Ooh, I'm having my, my choices disappear. Yeah, you, should, you should put the negative filter mm -hmm. back on again. I like that. Uh, that was your thing. That was your stick. <sighs> Yeah, that's pretty stick. Yeah, I need a stick. That's what I need. Maybe I just go with yeah. black and white for a while. You know, go with whoops. Yeah. Didn't work. Oh, there it did. It didn't work. Nope. Stop. I'm talking to you 50 years in the past. <laughs> I'm warmly black and white now. No. No, you're not. You're still <laughs> the same color. It's not working properly. I was warm and then I was black and white and then I was smooth. Now I'm black and white. Yeah, let's see how that works. Cool. Yeah, I don't like it. I just look. Yeah. I, look I look gray and gray. Well, yeah. hi, hi. Back in 1960, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sucks back here in the old days in black and white. Yeah, you should actually do like a back in time video on one of these Google things, as if you're talking back in time with someone. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, well, I could just play one of my old videos. And well, I have an argument with myself, and it would be like arguing with somebody from like 400 years ago. Yeah. Almost. In the internet. Yeah. Days. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, seems like an awful lot of time has passed. Yeah. Seems like I've been online for like 158 years or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want the new internet. Uh, what's what's the next thing? I want to do the next thing. The internet next thing, holographic thing. internet. Yeah, well, I want to do something different. I'm sick of internet. Well, I want uh, you, no, let's go back. Let's go back to the, what it started off as. That's that's the only option we have. Now that and or holographic 3D, 4D, 8D that we can try to accomplish, or we can think we can accomplish. We can use our imagination and project it onto the screen in front of us, or the hologram that we want to uh, imagine being there. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, or maybe I could just watch Teletubbies or something. Yeah. You can talk to the the, uh, the the baby son. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, you know, just watch the laughing baby. Watch the laughing baby. Yeah, yeah. Just watch the laughing baby. Yeah. yeah. Teletubbies and Jello commercials. Maybe that's <laughs> all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next big thing. The next big thing is not to say yeah and an affirmation to something, but to say no. 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 Mm -mm. No. But I really mean yes, but I'm, I'm saying no. When I say yes, I really mean no. It's so like when you say yes, you really mean no, and when you're, you say no, you really mean yes, or at least you imply it. Yeah, that's yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's a bad idea. And I mean, uh, like, bad. You know, a lot of guys use that. Like, I, mean, I mean, bad like good, you know, bad. Like, it's a bad idea. So, I mean, it really means good, you know. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. what about, you know, like opposite day? Does that mean it's not opposite day if you say it's opposite day on opposite day? Well, I guess it does, yeah. It means you, okay. means you canceled opposite day when you said it's opposite day. It was opposite day. Now it's not opposite day. Yeah, right. Uh, you canceled it then. Uh, yeah. See, see I, I know I can get pretty annoying pretty fast. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> silly bullshit, really. Right. Yeah, it's not as fast as the speed of light, but it, yeah, it was pretty fast. You know, I have to concede. Pretty. I mean, it wasn't 186,000 right. miles. Well, I'm getting closer to you. That, that's. You know, I can say that. It's fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast. So you're the speed of light, and I'm catching up. I'm the speed of sound. I'm a sonic boom, ready to um, accelerate. <laughs> well, actually, that's reach. not even coming close to catching up. Okay, I know what I'm getting there. 700 <laughs> miles an hour versus 186,000 miles a second. Come on, it's not even close. Hey, I said I was getting closer. Not I wasn't close. I'm getting closer. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. You can't say you're getting closer yeah. when you're so far behind. I guess. Um, well, I mean, it's just like if you only have point zero 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 one percent of something's DNA, you're not really very close to having the same DNA, right? I guess so. I guess. I guess. What, what's the next closest thing to our DNA? Chimpanzees? Is that it? Is that it? Well, I'm just saying that's getting close. Yes, it'd be like a mink. So, uh, so you're saying <laughs> I am. If you got like minky right. DNA, then you're getting close. But yeah, if you got trilobite DNA, then you no, know, you're not really close at all. No, I'm a spider, like the speed of sound to the speed of light. I'm a spider yeah, computer. Right. Okay, right. So you're not too close then. Well, uh, uh, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, we really don't have to fight too much in common with a spider. I mean, I don't expect poison when it's somebody's guts. So, yeah, yeah. not very close. Hey, I guess we can talk about this. Um, do you hate it when you forget something you were, you were going to say that you thought was so profound? Well, yeah, what I hate is when I dream something like I totally invented like a cure for cancer or something, and I'm like, oh, fuck, what was that dream about? I know I had it. I had it. I it right yeah, and then you forget it like immediately. It's almost as if you remember it, but you can't remember. You, you have it there. It's in the back of your mind, but you can't remember it. But you feel like you could remember. It's right there, but you just can't put your finger. It's like the tip of the tongue thing. You can't quite remember, but it's right there for you to for figure out. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. Like I have to concede that I have in common. Yeah, and I do too. That's part of the reason why there's so many issues in my videos. I can't, I can't sit in one, one moment and try to enjoy the thing I'm talking about because I'm too busy trying to remember other things that I need to point out later on. It's just, it's just so a pain in the ass. Well, that's why you ought to interact more with other people and like respond to videos. Maybe right. that'll maybe create a better pattern in your logic process, so then when you make a video, you're subject oriented. Oh yeah, and I can always look back at what they said and I can just say, oh, that's what they said, make sure I stay on subject and all that. So that's well, I'm just saying, it's sort of habit for me, and once you get the idea of like responding on to something, you know, a relevant narrowing of the subject, you know what I'm saying, then you'll, yeah. you'll figure out that you can't start talking about bananas when you start off talking about, you know, squirrel feet. Right. Yeah, because when I was making videos and just talking, it's almost as if you're just talking to yourself. You almost, you know, borderline schizophrenic, and you start not making much sense once you start building off of the previous thing that did, was building off, and you keep, you know, building a skyscraper, and it keeps tilting like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Oh, and it's ready to collapse at any moment. And that's what I was experiencing. Yeah, well, some of that's good, though. I mean, sometimes it's good to do that. I'm just saying you can't do If you do that all the time, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, if you jerk off too much. Not good for you. Right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, too self reliant, jerking off too much. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's, you know, the, the internal thing, you know how brain, you know what I'm saying? If you get too internal with your brain, it gets a little too herky jerky. You know, your brain starts going all kinds of wacky. Right. You have to well, get yeah. grounded, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But I have sort of missed you, so uh, you know it's good to see you again. Well, I can see you. You can't see me. You can hear me. Well, I see something. It's a round head and 
such. So it's close enough. Same difference, right? Right. I mean, they all look the same anyway. Exactly. Well, they all, you know, they all seem the same when they're so goddamn stupid, I guess. Uh, yeah. They might as well be a stick figure. I mean, that's what I'm saying, you know. <clears throat> well, it doesn't really matter. I remember what you look like. So in my brain, I can figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Fill in the blank. Yeah, exactly. There he is. Well, that's pretty nifty. Yeah. yeah. Neato. Yeah. yeah. Nifty. I like that word. It's pretty yeah. nifty. Yeah, I, I, don't have the <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't really get your nostalgic thing. But yeah, okay. It's, we'll play along. No, I was just being facetious. I'm not being serious, you know. Ah, I, I think you know. I didn't, didn't know we were even going to consider the facetiousness of the conversation. Uh, I was being, okay, sarcastic. Is that more appropriate? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, right. I understand that word better. Yeah. So you're being sarcastic? I'm bringing it down a level, you know, to, to speak to you. Well, that's kind of insulting, isn't it? You're bringing it down a level to speak to me? Like what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm moving it over. Like, you know, moving out the filing cabinet, you know, you move through the different uh, files. I'm, I'm moving it over one or two. Okay. You're translating. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah I, I actually tried to use one of those proxy things to get into your uh, thing in Tiny Chat or whatever. Or actually, they said you could go through Google Transla uh, Translate and try to find a way to put the link in as the, a different language and it sends you to the thing, uh, to the link, and it still didn't work, which is kind yeah. of a weird way to. Have it work. <laughs> yeah, well, people are doing all kinds of weird things. But see, that's the weird thing, right? I mean, frankly, if I'm only going to get 41 viewers in Google+, Plus, then why is this an improvement, right? So even with people getting blocked, I have, I have more people in Tiny Chat than here. So that's right. the irony of it all. Irony? I think it's an irony. Yeah. Yeah, but the point is all the people that really wanted to come couldn't come. Yeah, screw you, Forever Wolf Films. You fucked me over. You gave me the you gave me the worst you gave me the worst proxy to use. Sorrow, damn. No, I was just being sarcastic. Right. Yeah, he's just being sarcastic again. Okay. Yeah. I know. That's what that's what that's what isn't that what women like? They like like me being sarcastic. Isn't that what women like? I mean, being facetious. I can say facetious, and I can be sarcastic saying facetious. Yeah. Is someone going to mute never, me? I've never, I've never quite had a good handle of what women like, quite frankly. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's probably not a great idea to, to ask a transsexual when you're doing the what women like thing. I, I was, I was just, it's a, it's, what, what, what do you call that? A rhetorical question or something? I forgot. Okay, um, good yeah. enough. Yeah, you ask <laughs> I know facetious, but I don't know rhetorical or whatever the word All is. All right, well, whatever, so you're just being pointless. Okay, gotcha. You know, I was just asking, not necessarily her, but anyone. Oh, okay. Well, I'll answer then. Uh, I, I don't know what the fuck women... Women like Coke, I think, or Pepsi. Hmm. Coke well, or Pepsi. I, I'm going to ask you, because I think you have a lot of experience with women. I just wanted to ask you if you knew. <laughs> yeah, a lot of experience with women. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get... I, I have no clue. Women are impossible to understand. Well, when I say a lot of experience, I mean, you have a lot of experience compared to me. Ah, I see. Yeah, well, regardless. I'm just saying, yeah, I don't know. You know, forget it. Women are dramatic. I know that much. They have a lot of, they have a tendency to be dramatic. They're like, mm. you know, if there isn't enough drama in the world, they have to make some. But where would we be without women? Right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we wouldn't exist. <laughs> but, you know, I guess happily homosexual. I guess I don't know. I guess that's where we'd be. Uh, we'd be happily asexual. Uh, well, I couldn't do that. That would be unhappily something. You know. Oh, you you have to have some hole to fill, right? I think that's how the world I'm works. I'm just saying, you got to have something to play with. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's kind of sad. That's the only thing we really have that drives us is our. Um, our hungers. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, right? Potato chips and pussy, and that's about it. Yep, we're well, done. Yeah, you got the different orifices. You got the ear lobes, and or not the, <laughs> the ear holes. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I just don't. I can live with all that. Uh, that's like just saying, you know, broccoli. 
Well, I, you know, if I have potato chips, I really don't need broccoli. Just saying, you can cut it down to smaller bits and just say, yeah, okay, potato chips and poison. Yeah, that pretty much says it all. Curing cancer, maybe. Throw that in. But, yeah, there really isn't much to this living thing. It's all an ego thing anyway. You know, I was thinking about the whole relationship thing and what drives people in relationships. And it's really, you know, when I think about when I was young, it was, it was so much about my own feeling right about myself. And so you just didn't feel right until you were fucking somebody, right? So it wasn't so much about fucking somebody. It was about the fact that you were fucking somebody. So it's like, you know, I don't even know how to put that, but it is all just psychology, you know? It's all this right. ego shit. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. I... Something kicked me out of the, the room for a minute. Yeah, I'm probably bathtub guy. Maybe. No, I guess it was a download on my on the computer. Okay, that'll do it too. I suppose computers can do that. Uh, TMI, TMI, TMI. Downloads. Yeah. We don't need to know about that. That could be all sorts of things. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's all we've got. Is we got. Uh, let me let me go. You know, watch some porn or whatever, let me go eat my snack, and then let me go to sleep, and then hopefully I'll die in my sleep. <laughs> okay, well, that's awful optimistic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, I mean, seriously, I think we all want to die in our sleep compared to, I mean, some people want to have a grandiose ending, but hopefully it's instantaneous. You know, you're not sitting there suffering on a hospital bed, dying of whatever it is, you know. Well, yeah. Okay, well, I hope you die peacefully then. Thank you. I hope you die peacefully, too. Thank you. Die fast and peacefully. <laughs> Isn't that the best wish? Die fast have? and peacefully. And I come in peace. Oh, no, I die in peace. But anyway, yeah. I mean, that's the best wish you can give anyone. Hope I hope you die easy, man. Yeah. May you live not very long and die peacefully. And hopefully we don't come back to this shithole. Yeah, and then not be, you know, bothered Having to re-endure all the idiocy, yes. Re-endure the chase game. Yeah, just have a different name and a different face and be stuck with the same ass. Yeah, like a, like a bad case of deja vu, you come back and you wonder, what the fuck am I doing here again? Yeah, that's sort of how it feels, don't it? It sure does feel like I've been here and done this shit before. Yeah. Yuck. You know, that would really suck if we had to do this over and over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would really suck. Oh, yeah, it sucks like this sucks. Yeah, exactly. It'd be exactly like this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. That thought scares me, though. I mean, it really does. Yeah. Even though it's not real, it scares me because it's a thought that I can have, and it still bothers me. Yeah, but then you can just think about a big, giant fucking comet crashing into the Earth and blowing it into a million little pieces, and it's all okay. Ah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but even then, you're not even speaking for other people. Just as if the universe just re-exploded and we were here again. Somehow we had a vague memory of it in our past existence. Yeah. And, I mean, it scares me. I mean, really. If you, I mean, obviously you can just go through life not thinking about how shitty it is until it's shitty. And then obviously it's going to be a consideration you have, a, a thought that might you might have. I mean... I know. I just I mean, imagine you could be like one of those people, like some like 350 pound woman in spandex, you know, and you're just like, oh man, yeah. how embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to do that again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't do anything to re-exist my first years of my life. I mean, I, I just I didn't like it. I was miserable. <laughs> I don't want to exist again. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really don't want to be bothered either, but yeah. If somebody, but it, somebody's yeah. going to be bothered again. It doesn't really matter whether... Yeah, yeah, someone's going to be bothered just as bad or worse than you were bothered. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be the same shit, just a different name, you know. Yeah, getting drunk and, you know, getting high to avoid reality. I mean, you see it everywhere. People yeah. finding escapes left and right, up, down, and center. They can't do anything but want to escape... Even though they recognize life sucks, they still want to have a fight. They still want to, you know, they want to put themselves up like they, you know, live the life 
and make themselves seem like some grand accomplishment, whatever it may be. Yeah, people are stupid. Unfortunately, they're ugly and smelly and stupid. Oh, yeah, I just, I've been coming, I've been interacting with people socially more lately, and I just, you know, it's like, uh, all of them want to smoke pot, and they want to drink alcohol, and it's like, oh, come on, you have to be such an asswipe. <laughs> I mean, I understand, I, I can understand where they're coming from, I can understand, I just, I wouldn't necessarily do the same thing as them in the same way, if at all, you know, and I don't have the same vices as they do. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess it's everything in moderation and all that kind of crap. Right. I mean, I, I can understand that. And a lot, a lot of these people aren't alcoholics, as far as I can tell. They're just trying to find an escape every once in a while. Yeah, I don't have much social patience for drunks, so, you know, I can feel your pain there. I mean, I don't want to hang out with some drunk guy when I'm not drunk because it's like, God damn, he's... A stupid drunk. And keep yeah, but the thing is, is when you're smoking, if you if you're around a lot of potheads, I mean, they don't want to be around a person not smoking pot because they want to commune with you in a way that they can be familiar with. They want to be a pot. They want to commune with pot smokers and talking about life and crap, even though they don't realize it's. You know, they can have a regular conversation with someone else. It's just their paranoia or their pre, you know, their predisposition towards you know that i that idea of someone that doesn't smoke pot and they have that. You know, they, they stigmatize it when you're a pot smoker or whatever it is, you know, or you're doing the drugs and you're trying to get high. There's a stigmatization around someone that's not because they may think you're a narc or you're, you're this or you're that or whatever it is. They, want, they think that they can't really interact with you in the same way. Well, whatever. But, yeah, it's obviously it is kind of like you have to either join the crowd or you kind of got to find a different boat to sail in or something. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's been my whole life, so I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, well. Yeah. Feel your pain and such. Yeah, people, you know, excuses. And, uh, people are full of excuses. Uh, people are full of shit, also. Yeah. I mean, this is, I guess this is a good therapy room. You could just talk about your frustrations and they can end in a philosophical conversation talking about how we should, you know, you know, eventually leading to a, a way that we can find a way to fix our problem. And not only our problem, but everyone else's problem. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but the fix is always, you know, what's the best way to do it? to fall apart again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, hell, it is, you know, so, I mean, there's no fix, right? The fix is, yeah, how do you suffocate in your sleep? Well, yeah, that's that's obviously what we're, we're talking about. You know, we fix the problem, and the better off, you, you, the more you fix the problem, the more of a chance there is for the problem to reoccur because it's fixed, it's in a better condition relative to the previous position, now it's all the more likely you're going to fall apart again. And, you know, it's, you know, that kind of idea. You know, the, the more fixed it is, the more able it is to break, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's also kind of another reason to tell you. So, yeah, yeah, so keep piling on the reasons. I mean, I, know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I know that's what well, I'm just saying. It's just not very good therapy by my definition, right? So right. if I was to say what's the definition of therapy, I guess therapy wouldn't be... Talking you know, about getting depressed about life. Yes, figuring out exactly how doomed you are. Yeah, and then finding a way to make sure that doom is quick and easy. You know, a nuke, like you said, from space. I mean, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> a permanent solution would be good, right? Yeah, the temporary jumping ship thing doesn't work. You know, they don't realize once you're dead, you won't realize that you're dead. You know, that's as long as you don't know you're going to die, you'll be fine. We we live that every moment of our lives. Exactly. We go to sleep every night and you don't go like, oh my God, I'm going to be dead. Because yeah. then you'd be alive even if you were saying that. You're, you're alive, but you're asleep. And you're not conscious. Yeah, but you're not here. So, uh, yeah, it's not that frightening not to be here. Right. It's actually quite pleasant, actually. <laughs> That's my impression. I seem to wake up saying, oh, my God, I'm back. I don't want to be back. That's so pleasant. I don't even know I'm sleeping. Yeah, so I'd rather go back to the not being here thing. That was good. Yeah. I find it easier to fall asleep in the last couple months for some reason, which is, I like that. You know, I used to have a hard time going to sleep. You know, I, I could lay in bed for a few hours, and I could say, oh, I'm not tired yet. Now I can, you know, I can lay down and fall asleep within five minutes. I, that's, a ni that's a nice thing to have. Yeah, well, I've always been lucky that way. I could always yeah. sleep. I didn't have insomnia. I'm not going to, you know, pull that bullshit card on you or anyone else. It's just I, it's really nice to uh, not have the 
crappy inability to go to sleep whenever you really want. Yeah. But it's like, why go back? Why, why stay awake at that point? I don't want to stay awake. If I can go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. Yeah, well, sleeping kicks ass from my perspective. Like I, said, yeah, I, I think the part of sleeping that kicks ass the most is when you're like awake, but you're half awake when you're waking up, and you go back to sleep, and you wake up again, and you're going between sleep and awake, and you're having like maybe lucid dreams and stuff. That's always nice. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you have a boner. But whatever, <laughs> you know, I got to throw a boner in there now and then. Um, but uh, yeah, it's always good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So you almost know that you're sleeping. So it's like you're conscious of sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, you know, it's, it's all good. There's nothing bad about sleeping. It's all good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just wish there was a better way to perceive reality, but there really is. I mean, there is. I mean, people are doing it all the time, but I think they're really just escaping reality. More than anything. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. There's no better way to perceive reality, but I mean, yeah. The, the whole point is, though, is you know, who wants? I mean, living a lie is, you know, what good is that? Yeah. But then again, I think a lot of the times they they live the lie so well they don't even realize they're living the lie because they're so in the lie. I don't know, something like that. Well, I know, but they're still living a lie, so it's still like, uh, what's the right word for it? They're living the fantasy. <laughs> yeah, it's just intrinsically not likely to be the right thing to do, right? Right, yeah. I mean, it's not yeah, going to get yeah. the job. You know, I mean, if you consider it any kind of job, you're not going to get the job done if you're not doing the job properly. I mean, if you put a squirrel's brain in a hippopotamus, it's just not going to work. Right. Mm. Yeah. We got our brains specifically wired to our body and stuff. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm just saying our, the whole usefulness of being consciousness is kind of a waste if you're not going to be able to even do it realistically, right? right. It's, it's like being retarded, and what good is that? Right, yeah. It's like, why even have it? You know, you're going to use it to annihilate it, so why have it to waste it when, when you should be using it to... I mean, the only use of it is to fix problems, like you said, so it's only going to be you, eventually the fixing of the problem is to fix our existence by not existing. I mean, that's the ultimate problem. Yeah, it, it just seems like you're doomed to failure if all the soldiers don't have guns or something. You know what I mean? You're not going to win the war that way, so. Mm. I guess that's how I'm looking at it. You have no, having no utility and being alive is really bad. Right. I guess we're in a way defying that in a way when we, you know, we have, we can find ways to prevent having children now. We have, you know, con, you know, contraception. We can still do the biological function of what we find their biology is used for, but not fall for the same tricks that we fell for in the past or forced to fall for in a way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, whatever, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I can, you know, you can always get, you know, caught up in the game. I mean, you know, you, you get horny or whatever, you still get that thrill. Um, well, I, you know, I guess in my experience, you, know, you get hungry. It's like, I can't wait for my next meal. You're eating your meal right now, and just like, I can't wait for my next meal. And when you eat your meal, it's like, I can't wait for my next meal. It's all just... Uh, yeah, well, that's the, the downside, <laughs> yeah. Because you can be happy, but it's going to wear off. Right. And then, you you know... You know I mean, you might as well just I choose to either be horny all the time or not be horny at all. I mean, this game of on, off, on, off, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, being on all the time would be kind of a burdensome, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is a tension that you have. I mean, when you're horny all the time, it's like, you, you obviously, you're relieving it to get to, you're relieving it so the cycle can repeat itself. So, I mean, in a way, it's doing itself and doing that. It's just, it makes it all the more obvious when you do it that way, When at least when you're thinking. I mean, I think every guy and girl, when they're horny, when they're not horny anymore, they release the tension. They realize, oh, this game kind of sucks. And then all of a sudden, they're, you know, then they're horny again. And it's like, oh, life's wonderful again. Things aren't so bad anymore. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's wonderful, but whatever. Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, you got, I don't know, you just sort of, yeah, you just acclimate to it. Yeah. It's all very ritualistic. Yeah. It's all kinds of suck, that's what I think. Yeah. I mean, to, to, to quote you, it's all kinds of suck. Yeah. 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 I mean, that is your thing, suck, so. Yeah. yeah well, you should copyright suck. Um, Suffering sucks. Well, I suppose I could if I spelled it differently. <laughs> yeah, or something. Right? Then you could copyright it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spell with a lot of X's or something. Right, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, you know, I can spell Adam wrong. So hell, if somebody can spell Adam wrong, they can spell anything wrong. So, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. If it's, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't know what to say. Every, you know, you, you can live in the moment. Obviously, like I've said, it's just you live in the moment and you can endure, but you're forced. I mean, that feeling where you can you're forced to endure, but you're not really suffering much, but you're sort of experiencing unpleasantness, but you're, but you're not really, you know, horribly suffering where you want to end it, but you know it, it's it's there, it's lingering. Well, it's all a head game, right? But you can't do much about the body game, you know. So that's how I'm kind of looking at it. Is that I'm more harassed by like physiological. Shit. Yeah. You know, stuff that's like more physical. And that's yeah. the stuff I have no patience for. Well, I think the thing is. The is head game, I know, to me, the head game is pretty easy to play. I can play the head game, but I can't play the body game. Well, I think the thing is, is I, because I experience this panic disorder thing, I experience that a lot. I know you have similar um, experiences with that, and it's, it's a psychological thing that affects me. As opposed more to a physical thing, even though I do experience physical symptoms sometimes, I, I manifest it more psychologically. That's the, the more that you know, based on my the physical reactions I my, I have from that. But isn't that more like physiological though? It's not just so, it's just not just psychology. It's also right. your hormones and your phys right. physiology. So your physiology is reacting like vertigo or something. You know, where your 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 brain is reacting. But it's not reacting because you're thinking wrong. It's just reacting because that's bad conditioning. Right, and it's not because the the thoughts you're having. You know, the psychological thoughts can be a burden sometimes when you're experiencing anxiety. It's not the thought; it's the physical physiological response, like you said, hormones. It's causing those yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, once once they put you off balance, you know, then you're really in trouble because then you become defensive psychologically. So once they got you off balance, then you're on the defensive, and that's when your psychology just makes it worse. Right. You know, yeah. 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 I mean, when I'm physically bad. When I'm in a bad physical state, when I'm suffering physically, I can understand, you know, the psychological problem it goes away. When I'm experiencing a psychological problem, then, you know, it's usually because I don't have a physical ailment. But then again, when I'm experiencing a physical ailment, I can understand that even when this is gone, even though I'm going to experience pleasure and of, an, of, of escaping it, I still recognize it's going to be there. There's going to be some other problem that's going to be right around the corner that I'm going to be experiencing, whatever it may be, and it's going to take its place. You know? Yeah, well, th those kind of thoughts are really, you know, self-destructive, but there's, they're, they're honest, so there's not much you can do about that. But I'm just saying that that's sort of the head game, is all I'm saying, is, is that your head can be prepared for that and say, okay, I can get past that. Right. But, I mean, you said you had, you know, voices in your head before, right? Well, that's what I did. Yeah, I had... Yeah, I had, a, I had a, a couple of years where I was a bit psychotic. Right. Yeah, I've had some auditory hallucinations. I haven't had anyone talking to me, as far as I know, or you know, I haven't seen. And I've seen like visages. On, I mean, like anyone, I think, I've seen like little, like you know, little black ores across, you know, and out of the corner of your eye, and you look, and it's not there and stuff. I haven't had many of those, you know, since problems. But I've had. I do have this thing where I am a hypochondriac in many ways, and I experience illnesses even though I don't have them. So in a way, it is a head game that's causing physical problems, but it's because it's almost building off of itself, making it worse. You know, the physical problem, even though there isn't one, you think there's one, and all of a sudden you feel it, and then, you know, 
Yeah, no, I, you know, that's, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's more psychology. So I'll grant you that one's one you got to take, kind of got to put in check with your, you got to allow your brain to use logic and say, okay, you know, I've been there and done this before, so I shouldn't be fooled this time because I've been fooled before. The thing is, is you have to be fooled a lot before you can overcome that. You have to go through the, the, the bullshit before you can get over that, you know, it's always, you always got to endure before you can recognize in many ways, unless you accidentally, you know, happen to recognize it, you know, by accident, generally. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm just saying that that is a kind of thing, because I had a little bit of a compulsive disorder for a while, too, you know, where I was thinking I was gambling with the universe, you know, it was making bargains, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, all I had to do was rationally realize that, you know, this is kind of stupid, Gary. You can't gamble with the universe, okay? You can't, like, bet the universe $50. You know, that's just stupid. You know, let that crap go. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I have an, an OCD issue. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to talk about my, I mean, I'm, this crap about psychology. I know it's kind of pointless, but I mean, it's, I mean, it is relevant to about persuading. I mean, it helps, I guess it helps relieve the problem so it can make it easier for the um, discussion to be had, I guess, in a way. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, well, I think there are kind of things, some of these things are worth talking about, just because right. if you talk about them, then they, you, you, you kind of release their power over you. Right. You know, so sometimes it's good to just say, okay, this thing is what is in my way, and now right. I can get out of my way because now I've realized it's just a pile of shit. Right. Well, you know, I, I used to, I mean, I, I, it was so bad that I, you know, I, I, I'd spill a cup of milk and I'd spill it again just to see if I did it right. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm just saying, but that's the kind of stuff where, you know, you're smart. It's, it's a head game, but it's, it's a head yeah. game you have to overcome. I, yeah. I, you know, yeah, yeah, you just have to let go of it and say, I'm going to challenge the universe to prove it has power over me, and so then you just right. sit there in some ways, you know, you have to just be defiant. To a point, you say, "I'm not going to let it own me," and you know, because you just realize it's owning you. You know, what I mean, it's right, controlling yeah. you. So you stop it from controlling you by breaking its power by demonstrating it has no power. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But I'm not saying it's easy. Like I said, all that's you know, it's all this conditioning thing is tricky business. You know, what's you know, the, the part that's mutable and the part that's you know, hardwired. It's a tricky line. Yeah, well, you know the part you're gonna have to live with, and the part you can actually get rid of. Sometimes it's hard to figure out which which shit is shit you're gonna have to live with, and which shit is shit you can get rid of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Of, yeah. Most of my issues are psychological, and you know that's that's something I you know I'm probably gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. It's just I'll find ways to um, subdue it in ways. Um, and I, I've done that. I mean, I've gotten better. I'm not as depressed as I was a year ago. You know, it's not um, dominating my, you know, I'm not sitting there in a dark room staring at the ceiling and just, you know, you know, just sort of crying at my experience. Not, I mean, it, I was just crying because I was, my mind was overwhelming me in a way all the time. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, you can you get stuck in really bad habits. I mean, I had a really, you know, I had some dark periods, so just, you know, don't, I mean, I know those kind of, you know, where you really get into a really introverted, you know, dark place. Right, well, the thing is, I wouldn't leave the house for months, you know, that's until I, you know, it's it didn't work for me. I mean, I'd only leave when I had to leave. I mean, obviously, that's what everyone does, but it, it was very few and far between. Because I wasn't doing much of anything at that point in time, so you know, thankfully yeah. I'm doing something more now, which is you know, it's a distraction. But I, I still recognize I use that experience as a way to you know propel the information and the stuff I've learned through my experiences um, throughout my whole life, and doing that to um, still accomplishing things, but using the experience of whatever and you know I had to endure, and using that to um, you know make sure I can send the message, whatever message I may need to send depending on the situation, you know, one of those kind of things. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm, I'm totally uh, still quite disabled by my neuroses, but... Um, right. I mean, yeah, I had... You, you learn to live, you live around it, you know, so you right. find ways to survive it, but, you know, it does make you very vulnerable, I and mean, it does, you know... 
Well, yeah, it's called yeah, it's like a building character thing. You build character, you build in, you know, you build all that stuff. I mean, but the thing is, is you have to build it up, and you have to go through the suffering. So it's either you don't build it or you build it. I mean, that's the way it is. You got to go through the suffering. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, it. once it's constructed, uh -huh. like I said, some of it you're never going to be able to fix. I mean, if you allow uh -huh. it to be too conditioned inside of you, you'll never be able to walk on Earth again. You know, once you visit uh -huh. Mars, so to speak, you're always going to be a Martian. Kind of a thing. Yeah, it's kind okay. of you can't get back in the bottle. You know, cause there are certain parts of bad psychology that once you go there, you'll never come back. Right. I mean, my, my psychology, yeah, it's a very dominant thing. That's why it can be kind of um, not know where I'm going sometimes. I guess when I speak, because um, I'm scrambled brained I guess in a way. You know, it doesn't, it's not useful. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's not that bad either, though. I mean, it's the kind of thing where I think with a little more practice, you'll be able right. to moderate. Well, I think, yeah, like I said, I've been practicing socializing and getting out more. And hey, uh, sorry to interrupt you, man, but Gary, uh, can we get some of these fucktards out of here? There's people over in the tiny chat room saying they can't they can't get in over here, and a lot of these fucktards haven't said a word since I've been in here. Well, I don't know what that means. They have to get out of here. I didn't know there was a limit, but sure, they can. We can get some of them out of here. Let's see who can get out of here. <laughs> yeah, uh, S guy. Yeah, S that guy isn't doing anything. So you can go right. You don't need to hang out here. And Chris guy with the stupid flag thing. I don't really like flags anyway. He could probably go. Um, you know, but some of these people might actually want to say something. Yeah, maybe they should join the chat and say something, but I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. See, I can't see the icon. So it's hard for me to... That, uh, that Chris to... guy hasn't said a single word. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hide him from the... Well, I guess I could just eject him because, yeah, he hasn't doing do anything. So you're right. I'll just get rid of him. Okay. Probably fell asleep. Hours ago or something. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we got rid of that one. What else do we need to get rid of? Uh, <laughs> Forever Wolf Films. Get rid of her. Oh, no, no, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't do guy, is there Stay in there, S guy. Or are you just taking up space? Let's see if S guy says anything. Oh, S Buzzy. No. Whatever no means. I'm here. Well, I know. What are you doing here? You're just watching. So just watch. Just get out of that room. I mean, get out of the... You don't need to be part of the live broadcast if you're just listening. Okay, if you just want to watch, you can just watch the video. You don't have to be part of the live broadcast. So you don't have to be part of the broadcast. Oh, look who it is, Mr. Natural Man. Hi. Hey, Natch. How's it going? So what, you can only have like 10 people in here or something? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's when the space runs out on the um, Google on the YouTube video. So I guess then that's so what you want. 10. You can only have 10 people in here. Okay, well, S guy, I'm just, you're going to have to watch the video. So if you're just a listener, just go watch the video. You're just not getting me here. Yeah. I did ask you politely to, whoa, everything's bouncing all over the fucking place here. Holy shit, the eject button's evading me. I'll jump out and free my spot too. I'm well, not really I'll miss you, Wayne. But uh, you know, maybe you'll come back when you have something to say or something. But um, I sort of like you now and then saying something like, "I have nothing to say." <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice contribution. I like. It. But well, yeah. I'm just as happy to stay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see how many we got here. We got uh, we got kind of ten people. I don't know if the Norwegian guy is going to say something or not. So, yeah, well, there's Mr. Natural Guy. Toki is hedonist from Tiny Chat. He's not, he's not going to say anything. Um, oh, he well, is. Toki can go then. Okay. Sorry, hedonist, but, you know. All right, Toki is gone. 
or it should be soon. Okay. Yeah, so he's gone. Sorry, I didn't realize there was this limit and such, and you can't see the icons unless I mouse over them. What is it really paying any attention? I guess it's just more proof that Google sucks, right? I mean, Jesus. I suppose this pin thing kind of a sucky limit. I thought I mean, there's so much room on the actual chat window. I mean, there could be like 20 people in this room, but that would be kind of annoying, too. Uh. Well, it would be good if more people talked, but yeah. Be, right. yeah. But yeah, with all this extra functionality, it kind of sucks that it's too less than tiny chat. Yeah, kind of fucked up. Yeah, I guess, I mean, hey, can you create a new room on tiny chat? I mean, can you like put do not god one or something on it? Well, I suppose I could, but I don't see how that would change anything. Yeah, they they would still block the fucking name. They're fucked over. I mean, they're they are fucking with Gary Big Tom. I yeah, I mean, I could join every other room. I know you've heard this before. I mean, I've actually seen the comments on your videos. They have the same problem. It's just your video. I mean, I'm sure there's other atheists. Um, you know, whatever they consider, and whatever they're blocking it for. I'm sure there's other things on there as well. I mean, I'm so sure there's plenty of people more evil than me. Yes, I'm sure there are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if we if we stay on that website, I mean, making like an amendum room or something like that would be good because all the people that really want to be there can't go anymore. So. Oh, uh, I'm just not too sure. But anyway, we could always try whatever old pan's backup room that doesn't work. Uh, isn't that odd TV? Yeah, it doesn't work. It's absolutely bizarre. Because when I first made that room, I set a green room, but I, I've taken it off. I've done it like ten bazillion times, and it just won't do it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's me doing something wrong. It's more than no, possible. No, it's fucking tiny chat. It's not a coincidence. None of this is a fucking coincidence. Mm. But yeah, I've tried. I've tried. I mean, haven't you been? You've been getting fewer people in tiny chats. Yeah, well, you could always open the room there, tween two guy, right? You open the room, and then I'll go to the room, and then I'll make a video, and I'm in the room. Okay, I mean, if you want to do my room, that's fine. I mean, I don't know how to run a moderator or anything, but... Well, I'm just saying, then learn how to do that. Oh. You can make I mean, me a moderator. Whatever Wolf Films has more people... Than me. I mean, well, I'm can... just saying her room is broken, so her room's no good either. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I'll make another room at some point, but honestly, I just, I don't have a lot of time. So, um, yeah. and I, you know. I mean, you can always leave the room open and just let anyone join in. I mean, if I did live shows, I'd frankly rather at this point do them on the Vlogger Dome channel. I mean, you know, if I'm going to do my own, or, or I'd rather do them for those kinds of events or whatnot. I think your mic's open, Mr. Natural Guy. I think. Somebody's mic's open. I'm getting feedback of some kind. Lots of knocking and condinking noises and such. It may have been me, but I'm not sure. I can hear Mr. Natural coughing uh, or something. I can hear him making noises anywhere, I think, but I don't know. I hear a lot of tapping mouses. Like, like tick, 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 tick. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, it, it, if it's just the mouse click, it might have been me because I do have to click my mouse on, you know, the microphone on and off. But I wasn't making any other noises. That's true. Maybe, maybe he has a woman over tonight. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's doing something. Well, Mr. Natural keeps popping up, so I guess he must be making some kind. Oh, of... Mr. Natural, you know he's a troublemaker. <sighs> He must be making some sort of audio noise, or he wouldn't pop up, right? Right. Oh. That's logical, Gary. Thank you. I don't know how I hope I die. I don't know what. I don't know how I hope I die. Uh, I want to know how you hope you die. Well, I hope you, you hope you die. What? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I hope I die climaxing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. At least, you don't have to, at least you don't have to clean up the mess then, right? So, yeah, good. Yeah, there'll be a pretty big mess. There might be a tsunami. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, wait, are you wearing your uh, your Tarzan outfit? No. 
No, I mean the one where it's like it, it shows your, you know, it, it doesn't cover your lower body, but it's like it's a blanket that you turn into a shirt. Yeah, something like that. Neat. I like. I, I haven't seen you wear that in a few months. Yeah, it's you know, figure I'd do it for the fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you see all the comments when you get back. Well, I could see his ass. Yeah, well, I haven't stood up yet, so who knows what you'll see. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I wasn't anywhere. Uh, we were in the void. Uh, yeah, this is quiet again. Yeah, it's better quiet. Yeah. So you say you don't like to respond to people and um, when they're, you know, um, in, in text, right? You don't send many messages. Um, what's the? I know you, you, you explained, but is there any other particular reason why you don't do that? I'm just not very word friendly. I, I'm not a typer. You know, I don't like typing. Typing is, you know, one finger kind of typing, and right. I don't like I don't like writing. <clears throat> like I'd be really bad at greeting cards or something. You know, I'm really bad at. Hi, how are you? You know, I'm just not. It, it all seems so insincere. You know, the regular little niceties people throw at each other. I'm just no good at small talk. You know. Right. Yeah, I mean that's where the awkward conversation always begins when you try to small talk people and you have yeah, no idea what you're talking about. You know, writing two sentences to somebody just isn't going to work for me, and then I don't want to really write a whole bunch of shit either. So I, I mean, yeah, you know, this, either too uh, little or it's too too much, you know. So that's why I don't like it. Yeah, it just seems insincere too. I mean, you're just trying to get something or whatever it may be. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you're just trying to satisfy some notion in your head about what you want to express as a sediment and it's just like man eh, this is just so inadequate yeah I mean I've had that issue too where you want to you want to have this pr particular image or this particular um, idea of yourself and you want to reinforce it in every single way you can so how would I say that how would the ideal me say that that I have is an ideal in my head then you think it through and that's part of the OCD or crap whatever I was you know I experienced um, yeah, you, you, you waste time trying to be witty or clever, and it's like, well, what? I just wasted fifteen minutes on you know a fucking sentence. I mean, fuck that shit. Right? Or you're trying to find the right opportunity for someone to you know know this or figure this out. It's like you want to almost, in a way, view yourself through them and how you know they would view you, but you're only projecting what you would think of you. Yeah. Well, you get so you get so complicated. But then some people weren't so much. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like some people have real shit. You know, and you don't got. Any, I don't have any tridyism to fix your real shit. Right. You know, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna fix your broken leg with what? Some tridyism? Yeah. Oh well, it's only one leg. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, I don't want to be doing this silver lining crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But you don't want to do the doom shit either. You know what I mean? I just don't like personal. Personal. I just I don't like the responsibility of being responsible in some overt way for how somebody feels. Like if I'm doing this internet thing, it's like I can just pretend that I can throw a bomb and I didn't intentionally blow anybody up, right? So I don't have to take responsibility for it in a way. But if you're doing it personally, then you got to watch what you say because you could say something that's, oh, I said that the wrong way, and I did this, and I, you know, fuck that shit. Yeah, and then that, that can spread around very easily. Oh, that weirdo. <clears throat> well, I'm not so worried about the weirdo part. I'm just worried about I don't want to make any collateral damage. Yeah, I just know I know I have some particular... um. My my hang-ups and my um, inhibitions come out sometimes, and I guess um, that's my awareness of my own, uh, not necessarily shortcomings, but my my unique qualities or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> well, I mean, obviously, we've had a problem communicating in the past, just because I've sort of, you know, I've sort of recklessly stepped on, you know, some of your sensitive spots, and you know, I'm sorry about that, but I'm just being. I mean, the thing that's is, the liability of the personal part. That's what I'm right, saying. That's, you can only do so much to fix that's that. That's why I don't like personal relationships. Is because I have to be careful, and I don't like being careful. Yeah, being careful sucks. You know, because you got to be careful. You got to be cautious all the time. Well, what's going to happen? What do I need to watch out for? <laughs> well, it's hard enough to think and talk at the same time. You know what I mean? If you have to start worrying too, 
<laughs> well, then fuck this. You know, that's too yeah, much. That's, that's I can't worry, worry, think, and talk. I mean, that's too many. That's asking too much for me. Right. You don't. You don't have much forethought. Well, you have forethought, but not too much. Just enough to get the job done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying you can't scrutinize your your your. You can't if you create too many inhibitions, you won't say anything. Right. Well, that's the problem I had before. I, I'd say something. And I'd think about it, like, I'd say a sentence, and if I thought it wasn't right, I'd sit there and think about it for five hours, and <laughs> yeah, I that a lot of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah. A lot of time can go by, those five-hour chunks. Yeah, but even if I were distracted, I mean, it would, it would come back. I'm distracted, but I come back, and it's just as bad as I left it off as. Uh, ah, Chaz guy. Well, I think all you have to do is go to my... Go go to the uh, vloggerdome.com and it should be live streaming there. But you can also just go to my channel page and you should be able to just watch the video. Hmm. Should be able to. Isn't that the guy, the, um, the bathtub guy? or Wait, no, that's not the bathtub guy. No, no, Chaz is uh, the tattoo guy. <laughs> but I, don't, well, I don't call him that, but that's what he is. Right. Uh, the bathtub guy is the guy with Jack Nicholson on this thing. Yeah, he's just he's a drink spinner. Yeah. Oh, that's from The Shining, isn't it? That, that's from that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, that would be interesting. Chaz can make a room. <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny chat. That we should we should just call the room "Life Sucks." <laughs> or something. Yeah, and it would obviously draw away the you know the the anti atheist um. Moderators of Tiny Chat, you know, life sucks. Let's see what this room's about. Obviously, it's not about atheism or anything negative. Yeah. <laughs> football games and shit. <laughs> uh, I suppose you could disguise. I just sort of think that it's probably the better to just fight fire with fire kind of thing. Well, you know, right. just if you acquiesce to their censorship, then they win, right? Atheist death room. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Muslims or whatever. Fuck you. I think they were supposed to be like maybe um, whatever those Utah people are. Yeah. Utah. Are they Mormons? Mormons. Yeah, Mormons. Yeah, Mormons. It's the Mormons that are after me. The Mormons are coming. They're coming. I swear. Yeah. They want to get all their wives on me. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, they are. You know. Well, that'd be pretty nice. Yeah. They are kind of sneaky. Yeah, little sly foxes. Yeah, sneaky. Little mistakes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Everything is blinking here. I don't know what all this blinky shit is. But the oh, that's me. I, I'm blinking a lot, so that's just me. Well, I mean, I'm just saying it. Everything's quite blinky. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> I'm kind of blinky. Oh, oh, I'm kind of... Whatever. Blinking in and out of consciousness. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is where it leads to. It leads to conversation, and that's the, that's the ultimate thing, and that's what we're doing right now. And the conversation ends with an ultimate goal, and then the goal leads to the achieving of that goal, and then the goal's done. And I mean, yeah, well, you know, obviously that's yeah, but I mean that just gets circular. So yeah. Right. I mean, I'm just saying the ultimate goal, like. Destroy humankind. We're talking about it right now. Let's hope it happens. Let's discuss it with all of humanity, and then let's hope it happens. And then let's hope the people that know how to make a huge nuclear bomb send it down to the core of the earth and blow us all to hell. Yeah. Or something like that. But yeah, I mean, really, the argument is is that you have to persuade people. That's the first. You know what I'm saying? The first step is like this is what you have to do. I mean, you know, you're sort of obligated to first make the argument. Right. Yeah. But you can't make the argument to these people because they're fucking insane. Yeah, that's the problem. Either you're accomplishing it and the end is near or you're not and you're fighting the goddamn battle from the beginning. Yeah. Well, you can't have a logical conversation with people who don't believe there's logical things. Yeah. And what the fuck do they believe in? I mean, seriously. I can't wait to go to heaven to stare at Jesus' ass for eternity. I mean, what the fuck are they doing? Well, they don't believe in that, obviously. Right. But what they do believe in is that they're afraid of being dead. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what they do believe in. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's sort of like I they have this vague notion of what it is, but it's the unknown that they don't know yet, and they think it's going to be behind the next curtain, the death curtain, or whatever it may be. They're going to figure yeah, well, it out. They're just scared, not that what. I'm not going to have another bag of potato chips. You know, I mean, they're somehow afraid of this idea that the world will go on without them. It's like, uh, right. you know, it's an ego problem, I guess. Yeah, but regardless, they have this visceral reaction where they have to defend their life, right? They can't just admit, oh, yeah, but see, if they admit life is stupid, they have to admit they're stupid. You know what I'm saying? If they, you know, they admit it's a bug planet, they have to admit they're a bug. They just don't want to do that. Uh, they got to admit they're a monkey inside, a, no, a lizard inside a monkey inside a bug. Exactly. Sort of like the guy in the Men in Black. The little yeah, alien yeah. With dog inside of a lizard inside of a monkey, but, you know, same difference. Right, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Hey, Hazy Wolf is here. Yay. Yeah, he, he hey, watched. No. Uh, haven't him and Flyer been doing video? What? What? I don't know. Somebody said something. I think he said potato chips and cigarettes. Yeah, cool. I like potato chips and cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, and you also like diet Pepsi, right? No, I don't like diet soda at all. You like Pepsi? Uh, not particularly, but no. I'll drink it. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was good. Was that hey, there's a wolf in the room. Yeah. Weirdo wolfie. Hey, tween. Nice to see you, man. Oh. You, you can't uh, really I, see him, but yeah. I, Close enough. Well, I have the thing on the cover on my, my camera, so I, you can kind of see me through it, but very vaguely. You see the darkness a little more? Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't see your icon anymore. I see the darkness. Yeah, the darkness is really cool. It's it's like the real you, man. Yeah, it is pretty me. I'm pretty dark and spooky all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. me. That's my soul. You're staring into my soul, which is the abyss of all eternity. Yes. Whatever that means. No. Yeah, or else it's like a stale donut. Yeah. Yeah, the abyss of all eternity or stale donut. Yeah, but see, there's not even really an eternity. There's only an abyss you can stare into, but not stare into. Yeah, pseudo philosophy 101. Dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah, the abyss of the end of your ego. Oh. You know the the universe ends when you end because you're not experiencing the universe anymore. Therefore, the universe is dead to you. Therefore, the universe is dead to all of us. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But it's just this ego thing. People just can't get past the ego thing, so they can't get past the my life must go on thing because they somehow think they're going to keep living. They really do. They think they're going to keep living. But they thought about it realistically, and they just thought about it and said, wait a minute, no, it's just going to be a bunch of, like, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. Why the fuck should I give a shit about planet Earth? It's going to be covered with Mexicans and Puerto Ricans. Right. I mean, life sucks. I want to die. Then you, then you have terminal illness, and you're about to die. I can't. I don't want to die. And then, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I want to well, put a bag of potato chips. Oh no, I don't want to die. You'll appreciate anything at that point. Well, I'm just saying it's the un, unfinished business. We always have unfinished business. That's the problem. Right. But uh, that, that's inevitable. You're never gonna you're not gonna fix that problem. So people are just realize, oh yeah, that's the way life works. You always have unfinished business. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah, I guess I'm done. See you guys later. Yeah, whatever. I didn't meet every human and ask about every single issue, about every single problem to every single human. Oh well, I guess that's the way life works, yeah. Mm. Oh well. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Pretty much. Every philosopher, every scientist dies with questions on their mind. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just saying that it's just the ego that clings people to the planet. It's just this ego thing. Like, again, they're just not getting past the fact that it's not about you. Okay, life is going to kill you. It just is. 
No, you are going to kill you, right? Because your well, body. Is I'm just saying you're bad. you're just yes you're gonna you're just you're not going to be able to complete the mission. So the mission's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it go, you know. I just it's this obsession with you know. I wish I could have told uh, you know the conceivers of my existence that before I oh, wait I can't do that. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the obnoxiousness of it all. It's just that people have no humility about what they're committing somebody else to, you know, and that's the part that just amazes me. At the yeah, I, mean, I think I think people can have cognitive dissonance. They can recognize, oh, I shouldn't do this to another human being, but then again, it's like their ego speaking, and they want another them. It's like I, I, uh, I my, my, my line will be dead if I don't have a kid. I need to have another kid. I, I need something. <laughs> Stop that. He's he's pouring his water. I mean, come on. Yeah, that was really loud and obnoxious. Between, don't you think that uh, egoic consciousness, that is the definition of, you know, having that kind of problem, that cognitive dissonance? Yeah, that's part of the issue. That's what you're existing with in every moment of your life. The issues, the so issues. why don't why don't more like Eastern non dualists uh, accept antinatalism as a philosophy? I have no idea. I don't know much about you know Eastern philosophy. Well, this is this is one of the things I've noticed for a while. Is it seems like you know there's these post structuralists that are out there that are going to deconstruct the objective morality arguments, and very often they move like Antikanti Bad has done recently, and and many others, including physicists like. Michio Kaku, who Gary mentioned earlier, they'll, they'll begin to assert essentially that uh, a new definition of consciousness and suggest that there is something that exists as eternity outside of space-time that is a you know, non-conceptual consciousness exists there, which informs all things. And so on the one hand, they'll say, oh yeah, our problem is we can't get over our ego. That's what creates all the problem is egoic consciousness. But on the other hand, they're not willing to assert any kind of objective moral value beyond saying, oh yeah, we're all one, so we should all be nice to each other. But when sufferings happens, that's a delusion. Yeah, I guess that's a big problem people have. They don't realize that even though they're feeling a certain way, there's an objective truth to what they're feeling. The fact that they're feeling is the objective truth. I mean, well, I, I think all that philosophical bibble babble, though, is just bibble babble. I think viscerally. It doesn't have anything to do with the real problem, which is the defensiveness that people have about, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, it's like it's like when you get into a war thing, you know, and everybody gets patriotic. It's just, it's just as soon as you say there's something wrong with life, then you're saying there's something wrong with the person. They're taking it personally. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like you're offending their country, and then they have to defend their country, you know. And Even it's though just, they don't like their country, you're defending something that you're that they, that's a part of their identity somehow. That's yeah, the I'm just saying they're obviously glued to this idea that right. humanity is something besides bugs. Well, yeah, this, that's the thing. They look at humanity through the veil of it's all them. Obviously, humanity is all, you know, people from the United States. I mean, you know, white people from the United States, right? I mean, obviously, and they view that as projecting. I mean, almost like in a way, you know, you can't see who's in the vehicle when you're driving. It's almost projecting a, a vague human I idea to that vehicle. And who it may be, even though you don't really well, know. I'm just saying that I've, I've used this kind of yeah. metaphor before, and I don't want to keep bringing it back to some kind of racism. But yeah, I mean, I'm just saying if we had a drawing like of the United Nations or something, we're going to send an intergalactic spaceship out into space, and it's going to cost a trillion dollars. Well, and what if no white people were going? Right? You could just imagine all the Americans would say, "Oh, I ain't paying for that. You know, I ain't paying for that. I ain't going to pay to send darky into space." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, they don't give a shit about eternal life or colonizing the universe. If, if you say we're going to colonize the universe with a bunch of black people, they say, fuck you. No, I ain't going to pay for that. Yeah, because they view themselves being the ones. Well, I'm just saying that's what I mean by the ego being all the whole game here. We're really not arguing with anything rational. We're just arguing with your fucking ego. Right, yeah. yeah that's the biggest obstacle is the ego. That's why we're stuck in the game we're in. Well, and that, that existential kind of angst that's happening right now uh, where people are realizing, well, shit, maybe we can't go into space. This is where it's spurring all this transhumanism and the idea of, you know, artificial intelligence will be able to carry on after we're gone somehow. 
Well, I know, but they're not even thinking about uh, something carrying on when we're gone. They're not accepting the we're gone part. That's my whole point. My point is, is they're not accepting that. They're not imagining the future without them. They're imagining the future with them. Right. They're viewing everyone else through them. Yeah, they're assuming there's going to be a them. Okay, and they're still not. And the them isn't going to be. Oh yeah, me in that. Fat woman suit, <laughs> you know me, you know in Indonesia. That's be the muddy people. That's they're not. Fun. Yeah, they're not getting it. It's not going to be them. It's going to be these assholes. Right. That they have no identification with. That they dissociate themselves with. Exactly. It's going to be like it's going to be the Yankees without Babe Ruth. And the Yankees suck. <clears throat> well, I'm just saying, you get my drift, right? It's going to be that once the thing is gone, all of a sudden the magic's going to be gone. So once you take them out of the equation, then they'll get it. But they can't take themselves out of the equation because they can't let go of the idea that their consciousness is eternal. People are going to be happy even though I'm dead? That's just not right. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> People are going to exist. Well, well, I mean, I'm just saying, what they really know, though, is that people are assholes, and they wouldn't want to be any of these other assholes. Right. Well, like, at least I mean, they I mean, you force them to be somebody. Who are you going to be, right? Oh. Who, who are you going to choose to be? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go be somebody. Yeah. They'd only want to be themselves. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that the giveaway? Is that they're imagining a world, but they're not imagining it realistically because the world of the future ain't going to have them in it. You can be, you can be me. <laughs> yeah, no thank you, bastard guy, but, you know, no offense, but, you know, yeah. You have a, you have a charming smile, but, uh, yeah, that, uh, that ain't going to pay the bill. Oh, we get to hear him splash in the tub. Cool. Yeah, well, whatever. It's not exactly cool, but. You know, have to do. Oh, he muted. Oh, well. Yeah, he just switched horizontal to, like, right to left. That was pretty interesting. He's got a lot of chest hair. I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever. I don't want to pick on that kind of stuff, but, you know. No, I mean, he looks like Tar... No, not, not Tarzan. I mean, like, he's like... sort of honest. You know, it's like, hey, I, this is human. You know, I'm being human. So that's cool. Uh, I guess it's a, my non sequitur coming out, right? It's okay. I'm just saying it's a, it's sort of a visceral reaction, but then you say, yeah, but that's the way we are. That's you know. Oops! I shot him in the head. Oh, and he's still just he's still alive. Oh, that's my visceral reaction. Oh shit. Well, I don't know exactly what that means, but okay. I'm just saying visceral reactions always aren't, aren't always excuses, but obviously it doesn't matter once it's already happened. Well, I'm just saying that we can react in different ways. You can have an immediate reaction, and then you can have a more thoughtful reaction. The more thoughtful reaction will give you context in which you can take the negative out of the negative, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. You should trademark that, so to speak. No, I don't say so to speak too, so often. You said it a few times since we started talking this evening or this morning. Well, how many times? Do you think I said that too many times, people? So I was like a few, you know, a few times. I didn't say too many. I'm just saying enough. I mean, it's just you know, pointing it out in a way. Yeah, well, that's it's not my fault. I, you know, I end up watching a few Ludite Return videos, and you start saying shit like that. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you've mentioned that too. Um, they have these little, you know, these these phrases that they say, and it sort of you rubs off. Just made a new video to you, by the way. <laughs> what? Ludite, you just made a new video. Oh. oh, not to me though, right? Yeah, I think it's about your physics stuff. I haven't watched it yet, but it was something. Oh, cool. It was, right. I think, something. It's noble something, so I Nobel something, so I imagine that it's. Oh, cool. well, that's good then. Well, that I'll enjoy. But his last video, he was just doing all of that crap talking again. You're just like, damn, I have heard this shit enough. Yeah, yeah he took down all his old ones. The only, as far as I know, there's the one he made last night, and there's the Cult of Dusty video, but he took down all the old ones again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hazy was just talking like Ludite, which is kind of funny. Existential angst. Who invented that term? I mean, everybody just keeps saying yeah, that. Like, well, it's like, a right? He made that. that I mean, like, like, we're all supposed to be having some sort of 
existential <laughs> angst. I, I never thought about having no existential angst. I guess I'm just projecting, I guess, again. Well, I'm not saying you're projecting. I'm just saying it is kind of funny how you're the lingo, you know. It is It is all lingo, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I think you, know. you got it from Eastern, Eastern duality, you know, they start talking this the duality word. I went through my I went through like forty five years of my life without anybody talking about dualism. I didn't even know, oh, there's a dualism problem. <laughs> Shit, somebody should have told me. Damn, I've been missing out on the dualism problem. Mm. What have I been doing with my life? No, well, it's a, a non-dualism problem. So the well, non-dualist. I, I, I just say, I just don't. I just the whole idea of it. Just I'm like, what? This is like we're back to the fucking, you know, suffering sucks problem or something. Why do I have to explain <laughs> suffering sucks? What the fuck? Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the thing. Suffering does suck, but they don't get it because suffering is synonymous with the word suck. You're not saying a broken leg sucks. You're saying suffering sucks. I guess that's just too much for them to grasp. But maybe. what they say is, no, that's pain, and you don't have to suffer. Maybe. Yeah, know. you can magically what? <laughs> you magically not suffer? Oh, yeah, okay, sure. Life is suffering. Life yeah, is well, no, I, don't, I wouldn't go there. I mean, that to me is saying it too, that's saying too much. Well, life is chasing. That's what life is. Life is chasing the dead-end street. Well, life is chasing a need that won't go away. Yeah, that kind of thing. A need that will replace another need. Another need, another need. Yeah, you'll just need some more, so it ain't gonna work. Yeah, every time you say, every time I say something, I need to say something else. And I, oh. Well, it's all you know. It's just an insatiable, blah blah blah. We're made to be un unsatisfied, not satisfied. That's the design flaw. Yeah, I wish there weren't any flaws in the design, but that's the only that's the only that's the only space that we were given. That's the only opportunity we were given. We we're built on the mechanism, and the mechanism sucks. And we're living. That's the problem. We're conscious and living the mechanism. The way the um, all the photons and all the matters moving around were just the psychology living in the world that wasn't meant to have all this need, but we just happened to have the need, and it was possible. So therefore, we're existing. Well, I mean, we have a motivating mechanism, and that's the real vice. Right. The motivating mechanism is motivated for all the wrong reasons. It's motivated just to achieve a survival that has no purpose. Right. So, Tween, are you a hard determinist, so to speak? What's the difference? <laughs> it's like, you know, the idea of strict determinism, that everything is essentially predetermined versus, no, it's not predetermined, it's an unfolding calculative process. That's cause and effect. Well, it has the same it. difference, isn't it? Isn't it really the same difference? I mean, predetermined is kind of silly to say because obviously, if it's cause and effect, it's predetermined because you can't change yeah. the causes. Yeah, and just because it hasn't happened yet, and you're living the moment, doesn't mean it wasn't meant to happen that way because it's built off of a previous set of circumstances. It's going to happen a certain way no matter what. My reaction to your your word, the the sentence, the statements you just make. I'm reacting to it the way I'm supposed to react to it. You know, that's. Yeah, I mean, I just there's no real point. There's either yeah. determinism to say hard determinism is like to say hard atheism. I mean, come on, there's you know, there's no God or there's no God, right? I mean, there's no hard atheism. Yeah. There's, you know what I mean? It's just the kind of concept that I guess. I mean, there's a subtle difference in saying preordained, but I mean. It, determinism is determinism. You can't escape the meaning of the word. Yeah. That's the problem. It's a semantic problem. So uh, in physics, they talk about like you know Hawking is suggesting, and I think even uh, Susskind and um, Gerard Tehuft and people like that suppose that a har so-called hard determinism exists, uh, and that even non-local variables, um, you know, affect at the micro level. Uh, you know, quantum dynamics that are happening. So even though it appears, you know, uh, uncertain or random to us, in fact, they are determined. Versus the philosophical, uh, the philosophical definition would be causal determinism, which is just cause and effect. So there's just a subtle difference there. Yeah, yeah. well, it gets tricky because I, mean, I don't know how some of these people can argue for determinism when they're at the same time arguing for multiverses. So, you know, that gets a little bit bizarre. 
Uh, I agree with you, and it gets more complicated because people mean different things by different by multiverse by the term. So yeah, there might be other universes that are equally determined. Yeah, I mean, but that doesn't mean that every possibility actually happens. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a lot about how people use words. And then, you know, God exists, but it's you, it's all of us. We're all God. Why are you using the word God then? You know what that means. You know the grand association that's applied to that, that word. Why are you using it that way? Yeah, well, I mean, those accidents, I think, can happen, but... Um... Oh. You, know, and, uh, you know, the scientists who are just keep playing with this idea of this quantum shit as if, you know, the fact that we can't know something means that, that it's unknowable. That's the one that bothers me. You know, that's the whole creation of this idea that somehow there's a randomness or a variability in, in, oh. in the possibilities when, no, it doesn't mean there's any variability in the possibilities. It just means that we can't see it. There's such a uh, difference between those two things, you know. Yeah. Not to, to decipher something and then to say it's undecipherable, that's kind of bullshit. The fact that we can't decipher it doesn't mean it's undecipherable. Yeah, I mean, it's the same issue with these people that like to associate themselves with agnost agnosticism as opposed to atheism. We're playing with this idea of this quantum shit, as if, you know, the fact that we can't know very nothing means. Somebody, it's unknowable. That's the one that bothers me. The video window. You gotta close the video. Right. Now there's a randomness or a yeah. variability. Yeah. In. Oh, you gotta close the video, Robin guy. There you go. Yeah. But what do you what do you think about the people that I know you probably pointed this out before? But what do you think about the people that identify with agnosticism as opposed to atheism? I think they're pussies. Yeah. Well, you know, you can apply it to anything, and you must be an agnostic to uh, a lot of all these other things you can list. A unicorn flying. Well, I mean, in the silly, yeah, well, it's silly to be an agnostic to, like, Bugs Bunny is a Martian, right? I mean, why would I be agnostic to that theory? Right, yeah. you got to prove that's not true, Gary. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying, I really don't have to, and I can. I can prove it's not true in the sense that I can provide enough evidence to demonstrate there's no reasonable alternative theory. You know what I'm saying? How do you know Bugs Bunny is not yeah. controlling the universe through the television? That's the problem. That, so, so some atheists will go and say they're agnostic atheists, meaning, okay, they don't believe in any kind of personal God, they don't believe there's an intel intelligence or an intention behind the fabric of the universe, but that's all they're willing to say. Who knows what lies beyond that? I think that's fair, of, but it's ridiculous. Yeah, the idea of a God is created by religion. Well, I'm just saying is you still have to unravel the truth that you know that evolution does exist, so there is an alternative theory that is reasonable. So you'd still have to accept the, the grounding in the fact that that is a cartoon character and that there's no reason to believe it's anything other than a cartoon. God is a cartoon. God is reality. Well, the, yeah, the God that's proposed by most religions, the 5,000 religions that exist on the planet right now. But I did read a sci-fi story once where they supposed that a creator did exist but had no idea he created our universe and was completely unaware of us. Well, I know, but what, what would you, you still have to argue that the very idea of a creator is essentially just another cartoon character. It's just a freaking Robin Hood story or it's a Goldilocks story or it's a... You know, Red Riding Hood story, or it's a yeah, it's an unprovable supposition. It well, is. Well, I mean, it's a made up. You, you, there's no evidence of it, not a shred of evidence of it. So, it's entirely just a made up fantasy. It has no credibility as a reasonable deduction. You don't deduce it from the evidence. You make it up out of fantasy, and that can be demonstrated to be. That's the logic. So to me, that's a logical proof. Is the sense that you're saying it's 100% made up out of fantasy and 0% made out of evidence. Right. Well, so then you have to define what you mean by God, right? So we could say Lawrence Krauss has a theory about um, the first cause and something coming out of nothing, creating a universe. So. You know, we could call that God. Doesn't mean that it was intentional, intelligent, or a creator personality. Well, I know, but the idea of creator does imply something more than that. So I'm just saying that's a semantics argument. Then, so you're basically just saying, well, well, look, realistically, we know you can't get away with that. So who's eating? I can hear you eating. Stop eating. 
It's me, sorry, up you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty lame, bathtub guy. I like the premise of the movie, The President's Analyst. If I happen to have a god, that's the one I would choose. Oh, shit. That, that movie is like five million years old. James Colburn or something? Yes, James Colburn. Yeah, I, I can't remember that movie. It was kind of boring, actually. It was a spy versus spy comedy, actually. Yeah, well, that's what I remembered. So I'm trying to figure out where the god part came in. They found out that the telephone company was run by a robot who was a chairman who ran the entire world by running all of the communications behind all of the spy networks. Kind of like Snowden just found out. Well, I guess. Yeah, I, I remember the AT&T part of it. But, yeah, I, you know, it's just, I, I haven't seen that movie in like 20 years. So, you know, Well, just, remember... Remember one thing in the movie, the ultimate goal was to have a chip implanted in every child that was born so they could think of your phone number and dial you by just thinking of it. Yeah, well, I don't remember that exactly. Well, but. how close have we come to that now with IFD chips and et cetera? Uh, granted, but uh, that doesn't scare me too much, frankly. Eventually... Eventually, everyone's medical records will be that way. So, well, frankly, I don't. You know, that's another issue where I just couldn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> you know, if everybody wants my medical records, yeah, you can have them. Uh, they're not that interesting. Just making the point that a movie that was a comedy over twenty some odd years ago could actually give us a hint of what the future might be like in terms of data. Well, I know, but it doesn't really have anything to do with origins and God. It just has to do with the fact that we might end up in a Borg. Well, yeah, it seems pretty obvious that we're heading right for Borgatism. Borgatism? Borgism? Yeah, Borgism. Um, you know, idiocracy, Borgism. Or Googleism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, I'll grant you that Google will become God eventually. But... Um, you know, the idea of God is still a cartoon. It's still a fantasy. And I think you can demonstrate that there's no rational reason to um, initiate any conversation about the idea of a creator because there's no evidence of any kind of creation. Well, that's, again, saying God is a persona. If you take the original Hebrew version, it's just power. Raw power. Nothing well, else. Again, but there's power is only for an agenda, right? The Christian God had an agenda, right? All these gods have personality issues they're trying to resolve, right? They're creating for a reason. They're not creating for no reason. Then their reason usually is is they need something to bow to them or something to kiss their feet or whatever they're trying to do. So I mean, it's not really a. It's not. It's always going to be a psychological god, not a rational god. There's no rational reason to create need machines. So I'm just saying that logically, there's still no logical reason to invent the idea of a creator. You don't need. I mean, we're Frankenstein. You don't need to come up with a Doctor Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, evolution makes Frankenstein. Agreed, logic does not need such a thing, but then when you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with the emotional need to have something bigger than you take care of you when you're in trouble. Right, and but that's I, where I, that comes my, from. My only argument is, is that you can provide a logical proof. Because that's my only argument. That it's not like something that's, that, that's beyond our capacity to resolve logically. It is, it is logically resolvable. It's just people aren't willing to do what logic is going to imply, or what it's going to, its judgment is not going to be one they want to accept, so they're going to avoid the logic, but the logic's there. I mean, it's like the evidence that OJ is guilty is there, and then people just didn't want to accept it, you know, it's that kind of thing. Well, the glove didn't fit. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> You know, that obviously, obviously, uh, again, I'm just saying that it's based on what people wanted, not what the evidence indicated. Bathtub guy, you're again, microphone opening. The glove, if the glove don't fit, you must quit. Yes, we all know that. But that we already know that the trial was over long before that. So it didn't even matter that the glove didn't fit because they had already decided to acquit.
Hmm. Anyway. Hello. Everybody must be frozen. Good. <laughs> yeah. I had the room all to myself. <sighs> Hello, testing. Somebody else here? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> so anyway, so yeah, it's nice seeing you, Hazy. It has been quite a while. I've been watching. I've enjoyed. Okay, good. I have made some good videos. I mean, I think the video I made to uh, and you know, and kind of odd videos are pretty good. Yeah, I think who knows? Maybe that the logic and Antikantabad will kick off another dialogue that may go to some interesting places. We'll see. At least in terms of you know the variety of discussion. So whether you agree or not, at least it's some interesting discussion points to argue over. <clears throat> well, just his whole idea that his his presumption that logic isn't in the world. It isn't something we reveal about things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like logic is the relationships that exist between things. We just identify the relationship. We don't make apples round. We don't make oranges round. We don't put them in the same category for no reason. You know what I mean? Those are those mandates have nothing to do with us. I mean, pi. You know, the, the relationship between diameter and circumference existed before humans showed up. We didn't invent it. Yeah, I've never had a conversation with Antikantabad. I used to follow his videos, but I unsub a while ago after you guys got into a, a match at one point. I found it, I don't know, unrewarding. Yeah, but, uh, it, is, it is frustrating, but it is, I mean, you know, it's just kind of irritating that people just seem to reward him for saying things that are just anti-intellectual. I mean, it's just completely anti-intellectual to say logic is made up. Well, this is, I'm trying to understand where he's coming from, so I really don't know, like, the basis of his thought, where it's grounded in. So my thought is, you know, you've essentially got to agree on an ontology if you're going to go anywhere in the conversation. And that's almost impossible. My my perception is, based on his name and his discussions in the past of um, Jainism, that maybe he is kind of mixing post-structuralism and, and post-modern deconstructive techniques with the idea of Eastern philosophy where it broke into um, Mahayana and, you know, certain areas of Vedanta that are non-dual traditions in which they suppose that there is a... <laughs> yeah, um, like anybody's paying any attention to you now. I mean... Well, I, I'm just telling it, man. I mean, that's the way it is. I think that's where he's coming from, but he's not being explicit, so I can only guess. Well, I'm just saying, the way you said it was so, whatever the word for that, pedantic? I don't know the word to write. It yeah, you got to know that shit, unfortunately. Well, right? saying, it's a whole I different tradition. I don't think you have to know that shit. I'm just saying that you could just say that he's taking some, you know... Um, you know, Eastern notions of futility and mixing them with Nietzschean shidola, you know, and pretty much sum it up right there. Right. Um, well, I didn't mean you personally need to know it. I'm just trying to, I, I don't even know if I'm correct in my assumption. That's all it is. But there, there's no, the idea he's, that... He's, he's as nihilist as you can get. So, I mean, that's all you have to say, okay? He's not mixing anything. He's just a motherfucking nihilist. Yeah, fair enough. That's my impression as well, but he's not explicit enough for me to assert well, that. He, he's a, oh, he, like all nihilists, he's a conditional nihilist, which means he's a preposterous hypocrite. So he knows what tyranny is when you're telling him what he's doing, but he doesn't know what imposition is when he's imposing. You know what I'm saying? He knows all the crimes you're committing against him, but he cannot see any of the crimes he commits against you. So it's just all a one, you know, totally, you know, whatever you call that, you know, one-way vision, you know. I mean, you couldn't get more right. duplicitous and hypocritical. He had, he knows what tyranny is. He knows what thumbscrews is. He knows what totalitarianism is. He knows what all those words mean, but he doesn't know that A equals A. Right. Well, I think I think he knows, but he's pointing to something that is like a 
subjective personal experience that is a well, transcendental. I'm that he quite obviously is saying he doesn't know what the word responsibility is, but he somehow knows what a thumbscrew is. So how the fuck does that make any sense? Right, and so uh, that's what I was trying to make sense of. And and in the Eastern tradition of Vajrayana Mahayana, they they assert there's essentially two different areas of reality. One is, um, you know, uh, in, uh, the reality that we know, intrinsic reality as we know it, phenomena reality, and then there's an ultimate reality which lies beyond that, which you know, no no tongue can ever soil the truth of that unknown. So it gets into mumbo jumbo, right? Well, that doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, there's reality A and reality B. Well, no, there's whatever the ultimate one is. That's the only one that matters, right? So let's go find that one. Exactly, and that's what the that's what the Eastern traditions assert exists as a form of non-conceptual, non-dual consciousness that that exists in eternal non-conceptual state outside of space-time, which is like okay, you can't prove that. All you can assert is that you had an experience of that. And that's all they do. That is the whole Eastern tradition in a nutshell. That's why they're saying you've got to have this, you know, enlightenment, nirvana experience in order to get it, which is a transformation of your psychology, which you can't put into words. Well, I know, but it's a transformation of your psychology into basically a resignation that you're just looking for a way out. I mean, you know, the Buddha end is basically, yeah, die by fire so you don't have to be reincarnated. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say die by fire per se, but definitely it's the only option is to get out of the cyclic well, saying, realm of samsara. That's what I understand is the way you are able to escape the reincarnation is fire. fire that's why they're obsessed with this fire thing, is this fire will get you out. Right. And in that sense, I mean, it's a non, it's not a physicalist or materialist perspective. So it doesn't, although there are some interesting things that it has to say about reality and phenomenology philosophically, and that connote to contemporary science, the findings of contemporary science, there's no there there. I mean, it's, it's a, quite a, a hurdle, a leap. And, he, and like Ligotti points that out in Conspiracy of the Human Race, he's like, show me, show me these guys who have done this. Have them prove it. Yeah, well, I'm not even asking them to prove it. I, I'd just like them to provide a logical proof. I'm just saying logically it makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's this idiotic recycling for no purpose. When you know, I say nirvana, they, they just mean you're going to be dead. I mean, you're just going to be escaped from life. That's nir all. Nirvana is just really the, yes, exactly, the ending of your need. That's basically the game. Well, my, my perception would be, yeah, that's just for a self, right? But the uni phenomenal universe as we know it keeps going on. So you, you would think yeah, if there was some... So it's completely self-serving, which is completely illogical. To that end, I agree. That's my problem with that tradition. Yeah, it's like I get immunity, fuck you. That's the statement, right? I mean, there's no other statement here, right? There's basically, they're saying that the... The best you can do is to be a selfish cunt, uh, jump ship, and uh, you know leave the victims to their fate. Well, there there could be one alternative, which you know is the idea of the bodhisattva and the idea that they that the bodhisattvas rescue all sentient creatures from existence. But if that's happened, why aren't we there yet? Right, that's the problem. So, like I think you've mentioned before, hey, look, we can die tomorrow, but the earth will keep peopling and life will keep lifing and there's going to be more sentient suffering and even if it's not happening here it may be happening elsewhere mm. and that's the problem well I'm just saying the very idea of you leaving when you're leaving suffering behind isn't really much of an accomplishment that's all I'm saying so and the idea that somehow your soul is somehow like you know, there's seven billion people on Earth. I mean, the addition just doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? The number of of consciousness doesn't seem to be dwindling. So if they all jump ship, yeah, theoretically, what they, we can all escape? No, we're not going to escape biology. So it's all kind of stupid. Yeah. So I mean, you've mentioned before the idea of you know, there's going to be other selves that are going to be born and are going to 
suffer. And if you look at that as a part of, of a process of the universe, so the universe is doing this unfolding constantly through time and creating new forms, and some of them are going to be sentient. It's just going to keep happening. In the big picture, holistically, it is all one thing. And so even if any one of us dies, there's going to be more selves that are just as much an I as we are as a part of that whole universe doing that. And that's the problem. So how do you stop that? And You kill us all. Well, I'm just saying, but that, that, that you just get back to some kind of futility argument, like it somehow matters that uh, you don't bother curing cancer on planet Earth if there's cancer on Mars, you know what I'm saying? But you still, of course, preventing harm is preventing. Any amount of harm you eliminate is a good thing, but I'm just saying that obviously if you can if you can eliminate a lot of harm, you go for the lot rather than the single harm. So, yeah, logically it makes more sense to drag as many people into the fire as you can. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you dying could end up causing all sorts of... You know, but some kind of idea that this is all inevitable is just a, a primitive notion, right? I mean, the idea that you can't stop it or that evolution is inevitable, in my opinion, is kind of based on nothing, right? I mean... <clears throat> there's no evidence that this isn't a tremendously improbable existence. You know, matter doesn't do this easily. It does this, uh, you know, this is difficult to accomplish, not easy to accomplish with a bunch of photons swirling around. Yeah, it seems to be one in the universe. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it seems kind of obvious that there aren't, you know, it isn't Star Wars out there. You know, there ain't a bunch of, like, elephant people playing the clarinet. Mm. Yeah, that's why we make movies and fiction. Yeah, well, I, I just mean that it, this doesn't have to be inevitable. This is just one circumstantial pile of crap. And yeah, once this is done, it's done. Mm. Yeah, it looks like he he's not in the room right now. Is he? Yeah. Well, I guess he fell out. Yeah. Mm. So maybe. I mean, what else can we do? We we say life sucks. We get it done, and then that's it. Yeah, we just do our janitorial duty, you know. And, and we we get on here and we just talk about how life sucks and how we try to figure out how a way to take care of the issue, and that's really the only. Yeah, it's it's all quite dismal. Yeah, there, there's no good options. There's only you know work and harder work. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we could talk about getting caught up in the game, but that would just be a distraction more than anything. Well, I'm just saying you might as well be a zombie. You might as well be retarded. Right. So, you know, what's the point? Food, 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 food. Pussy, 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 pussy. Sleep. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm just saying, it's, everybody's been there and done that. We've done the monkey thing over and over and over again. Making one more happy monkey isn't going to really accomplish anything. Yeah, I, I guess the mentality a lot of people can have is, you know, I've already done this. Why should I have to make someone else have to do the same thing? May I should just end the cycle right now and just say, screw how this baby making. Let's end it right now. now well, at least I'm just saying, it, logically, it's not, it's not a difficult thing to understand, but I'm just saying obviously for emotionally, people can't let go um, yet of the optimism they have to live by. That they, It's like their drug. You know, optimism is like a, uh, it's like alcohol or something else. It's a... It's you know a, it's wrong, but you'll do it anyway because you're addicted. You're well, I'm saying, it, says, it comes to that. It comes to the fact that they can't they can't live uh, the truth, they have to live the fairy tale. Mm -hmm. The drug yeah. is stronger. Yeah, something like that. Well, the ego, like I said, it's all this, so much of this is ego. Like I said, what is the, you know, like I, I still have a real problem with the whole male thing in terms of what what is what use does a kid have to a male? I mean, I just don't see the point in it. I never did. You know what I mean? As a guy, I just don't see what the fuck. Why would I want a kid? It just sounds like a terrible pain in the ass. 
I gotta worry about it all the time. Fuck that shit. It's not that you have a kid. It's that once you have the kid, you have to take care of it. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's like a bomb. It's like making a bomb and living with a fucking nuclear bomb in my living room. Why the fuck would I want to make a mess? Of my, my, you know, a monster. Why would I want to be responsible for what it does in the world? Yeah, and I guess that's what's confusing about many uh, modern men. They want to have kids, but back then, when you didn't have much control over it, you just fell for it, and it was obviously just part of the game to be played. Now it's like, I want to start a family. I want to, you know. Let's... Well, I don't even know if they want to. I don't know whether I don't think that's it either. So I, I'm not sure what it is. It's a mystery. It's it's it's. I'm an agnostic to that. Well, I don't know what the real story is. Yeah, I don't know what they're really after, but it doesn't make much sense to me. It's a penis thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> it's got to be somehow I guess related. A lot of the I want to see something comes from the male. I want to see my last name push on to the next generation or whatever it may be. I don't know. That ego thing. I'm a man. I want to have my manly genes moved on with my last name to the next generation. You know, this well, I mean, it obviously doesn't take any work. I'm just mean that why wouldn't the burden of it occur to them? I guess a lot of men can just figure that, yeah, I can, you know, if I get a divorce and I won't pay my alimony and fuck it. And, you know, I mean, I guess that part just doesn't enter my head where you could evade responsibility for the mess you made. And I guess most people think they can. So I guess if they don't like the way it comes out, they can just walk away and say, yeah, yeah, okay, that Frankenstein didn't work. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a, that's no respectful way to play the game. Well, I'm just saying I can't imagine how else they're playing it because otherwise it's just a burden, right? Yeah. I mean, if you take having a kid seriously, like, okay, I'm making a human being and I'm going to be responsible for everything it turns out to be, you know, whatever character or whatever character it doesn't have, it's going to be my problem. I mean, I made it, you know. I, I mean, I, I just... Don't know why that one just shrivel you right up. Who the fuck wants that commitment? Yeah. I mean, why would I? You know, I'm just saying that takes an awful lot of. You have to be awful optimistic about your control powers if you think you're going to make a good human being. When you see the average human being and see what a mess they are, why do you think you're going to be able to do so much better? I guess maybe he just thinks the bitch is going to take care of it. Right? Well, I guess that's what I'm saying is that the men have to make no contribution. I guess they don't have to pay for it in advance, right? They pay for it later. So I guess if they're really dumb, yeah, they didn't really think about it. And so you sort of see that in the face of a lot of men, though, right? You see these men who are trapped in marriages and have kids, and you can see it on their face, like, God, my life sucks. Yeah. So, you know, I guess it's, you know, touche. So I'm glad they get what they deserve. Which is hard. Uh, they just, you know, drink themselves and then they... Yeah, smoke. yeah, so I guess they deserve, you know, exactly what they get because, you know, it didn't but take... the thing is, is they don't learn their... Life sucks. Yeah, yeah. I'll just take a few drinks and then I'll take... You know, it's one, it's one thing for a kid to have the delusion that, you know, they can buy a baby duck and it's going to stay a baby duck forever, but it's another thing when I do... An adult human can't figure out that babies grow into humans. Yeah, when you get the puppy at the um, puppy store, it's going to be something more than a puppy in a very short amount of time. Yeah, and for people not to be able to appreciate that, that that's really stupid. I'm so fucking stupid. That I already got the dog. I might as well keep it. Yeah, look, I love you, pal. Good buddy, old pal. Yeah, okay. Except they don't, tween. They give it up to the pound when it gets too, too much. Uh, that's in some cases, not all cases. You know, it's not every dog that gets thrown to the wayside. That's right. <laughs> but mean, same with, same with kids, we... right? So I have friends that tried to have kids for years, went to fertility clinic, all that stuff. No matter what, it was a selfish decision. But it wasn't like, oops, we're pregnant, now what? That kind of thing. It's probably a mix. You know, it's like 50% are accidental. A significant number of the rest, maybe 25%, are intentional for some selfish reason, whether it's pure ego or boredom or whatever. Maybe it's just to keep the wife happy. Who knows? Mm. It's always egoic, though. It's always selfish. Mm. It's always not considering the risks. 
Well, yeah, it's not a logic. You know, there's no logic to this. And so I'm just saying that that's the part where you got to say, well, should you know, you know, this is like the most important thing you can do, and shouldn't you be obliged to apply some reason to your decision? So you should be able to write a paragraph explaining why you're doing this. Yeah. I want well, my kid to watch football with me. <laughs> as you guys probably know, I do have three children. Mm. Nifty. Well, I don't know if it's nifty, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, look at look at all the adoptions that take place. I was adopted, right? So somebody did didn't want me. Somebody else did. All of, all of my children are non biological. Back in the '60s, when I said zero population growth, I mean that I meant that. But I didn't mean that I didn't want to be a parent or I didn't want to try to raise children to be better people. So I made the decision to do that with three different children through my life, who are not my biological children but they are my kids. Ask them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good luck to them. W would you be willing to adopt me as well, Mr. Natural? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I only, look for, I only look for troublemakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to redo the potty training, right? That's the, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah i got to fix something, man, bathtub guy. I, that's yeah, I'm of mixed um, sentiments regarding this. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure people can find reason to do that. I'm just saying it would never occur to me to, um, you know, parenthood just doesn't, just, yeah, I, I, I can see no way of winning that game yeah. because there's no way to, um, you know, the decisions are just too onerous, you know, to... Well, maybe you know, if we we're going to reduce suffering in, in some positive way, maybe that's a reasonable, you know, if you can... You know, I, mean, I, was, I suppose if they were, you know, if, there was, if the adoption agency was like a pet store, you know, and the little puppies were sitting there in the window, <laughs> you know, and you said, okay, nobody else has taken it, so I'll take it, and, you know, there's a little loser dog, you know, with three legs or something, and everybody hates him, and, you know, I'd feel bad and say, okay, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. But yeah, it's that kind of circumstance, you know. I just wouldn't feel. I wouldn't. Sadly, we know that's not the way it is. The loser dogs, when it comes to people, usually end up in orphanages and foster homes. Yeah, I'm just saying that it just wouldn't it wouldn't appeal to me as something I would want to do. You know what I'm saying? It would be definitely something I would look at as being an incredibly unpleasant experience to yeah. attempt to raise a kid. Would be horrible work. Yeah. Mm. Awfully anxiety provoking. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot, a lot of those moments. Lots um, of anxiety. Are you, almost, moments. are you in a way almost feeding the ego of the parents out there? Oh, they've gone through so much adversity raising their child, and they use that as almost a way of, you know, validating themselves. Well, I know, but I guess that's where the line has to be drawn between between where you're having an argument about you know, different psychology. So, I mean, it's really idiotic for me to say, okay, I don't like sushi, therefore sushi is unlikable. You know, I have to concede that, no, somebody else could enjoy sushi, you know. So, this is where I'm saying that my psychology sort of gets in the way of me being able to relate to people who can find it enjoyable to engage in parenthood where I would find it obnoxious. Do you think some women enjoy... Um Pregnant, uh, having a child, you know. Well, there are. Unfortunately, there are many who just love to stay pregnant. Look at the woman, 19 and growing on television. Most of those she had herself. Yeah. Bach yeah. had 26 well, children by three different women. The most altruistic act is selfish, mm -hmm. ultimately. And when you think of somebody like, uh, what's her name, Michelle Bachman, what, she's got like 25 kids, you really got to wonder whether that's good janitor duty. It's for somebody like that to be adopting, right? I think those people shouldn't be near children because they teach them how to be crazy. They must really like birthing those babies. I have a really old video on my channel. I can't remember what it's called offhand now, but it's all about like a natalism fetish that apparently has been kind of cropping up too. So it's just like the illness of, of, of this whole thing is really, yeah. it takes on a lot of really horrific forms. Yeah, there's some guys that are just like intense, everything. you know, 
That's where milk porn comes from. Yeah, you know, they put want the bun in the oven. So. Yeah. Well, or just the people who adopt artificial humans as dolls and caretake them. That is just far out. I'm waiting for the that baby. That is really fascinating, ball. actually. Yeah, in the strictest yeah, psychological here. terms, though, anytime you transfer emotion towards a person to any kind of object, that's considered fetish. So people are fetishists. Oh, Certainly, I'd throw those kind of people in that category. You, you know, I mean, obviously, their psychology is creating their dependency or their perception. Like, say, some woman who enjoys being pregnant, she might enjoy being pregnant because of the way the world treats her when she's pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they like the condition yeah. that they feel. Quite often, a lot of women feel very fulfilled as a human being when they're carrying something. Uh, well, I know, but some of that perception might be just all that psychology, you know what I'm saying? The idea that this is what um, um, it means to be a good American or something, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're doing it out of a, a kind of pride that's built on a perception that this is what productivity is or something like that. I think there's a biological imperative and then culture gets added on top of that and kind of helps to freeze it in place. I call it arbitrarified. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's much of a budget because you know most women don't have a good time when they're pregnant, but I think they're addicted to the idea of being needed, and so they want to create. Some Nifty. When I well, first it's, met the, it's the only way a lot of women have you know think they can win. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the movie Raise the Red Lantern, you know, like, the only time she crash. feels like a human being and is treated like a human being is when she's pregnant. I, I mean, I know it's a very, you know, culturally that's a hugely different example. But. Also, I've met many, many women who cannot imagine going through life without a man in their life for some reason. They do not feel like a whole female without a male attached. Well, I know men like that. That are always in relationships. They can, you know. But there was that. Uh, there was some documentation posted recently about how people would rather shock themselves and be alone with their thoughts in a room for 15 minutes. And I think it's something very similar to that. You know, people are just desperate to not be alone and face their own psychology. Yeah, that is kind of a crazy piece to this. I mean, for all of of everybody's selfishness, they don't want to concentrate on their own lives. I mean, you'd think they'd want to if if they if they love themselves so much and they're so into themselves, you'd think they'd want to take it somewhere, and they don't. They just want to schlock it off onto somebody else to do it. Anxiety and boredom often pushes yeah. me towards okay. suicide. Okay, I don't know if I'm back or not. You're back. Okay. No, you're right. Mm. <laughs> and then there's the whole idea of, of people, you know, okay, my parents fucked up and they were terrible, but I'm going to do it right this time. I took that sincerely. Yeah, I still think I, it comes I down to this tried. thing where they want somebody to love them and, you know, it's a toy thing. I yeah. think that's definitely true for them. They made the toy. They can't just adopt someone. They Unconditional love. Dogs. I made the toy, and it's mine, and it's a product of my bosom. Well, and all the societal pressure on women to do that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. To be accepted. It's, they feel deprived. They need something. It's all deprivation. My view on that at this point is the ball's in the, the women's court. The antinatalist agenda needs to be given to young women. And they need to do it over the internet so it goes worldwide. Yeah, and the rapists out there too. They need to have you taught a lesson. Well, that is going to be interesting when this conversation starts to get into more, you know, heavy focused feminist circles. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I wonder sometimes whether that's sort of a ticking time bomb as far as a lot of women interpreting. The, well, some women already do interpret it as incredibly anti woman. And, um, so I, I wonder sort of what's going to happen with a lot of that. And look, look what happened to some of the, er, 
look what happened to some of the earlier fo uh, founders of the women's movement as they grew older and wrote books. They said they regretted not having children. That didn't help. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't make the perspective unsound, illogical, or untrue. And hopefully, you know, the meritocracy of ideas will play out eventually. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a browser crash. <laughs> it hasn't crashed all the it, way. It happened to me earlier, and I apologize for that as well. Sorry. That was the problem I was having getting online. I kept trying to come in with IE. So I'm just kind of waiting to figure out what it's going to Google. Google was much more stable on this Google thing than in uh, my IE browser. I think Firefox is the best browser to have generally. Love it. Love it. It's great browser. Yeah, well, it's... Yeah, well, it's not Chrome anyway. Um, yeah, it's almost working. So, old thing, <laughs> I shared a link with you earlier. I don't mean to, you know, um, derail the conversation, but I have a Roku player. I don't really sub to any, or you know, pay for a subscription to Netflix or anything like that anymore. Hulu, whatever. But I have noticed that there are some YouTube channels that have used. Um, software to get into Roku and you know people can surf through what channels are available and add them and watch them and I thought that could be cool so I think you can load 10 videos for free and you can load un unlimited videos for five bucks a month and there's a couple of YouTube channels that have gained a lot of more views and subscriptions because of uh, their parlay into the Roku Service. Yeah, I haven't I haven't used it yet at all, but I did download it uh, recently, and I you know I mean I just kind of did some cursory glances of it. I really haven't had time to look at. Um, there's a couple of new apps and things I've been, but yeah, I mean I it does look like a pretty good option. I mean, um, well at the minimum you guys could pick and choose a ten videos that are the premier best stuff that you got and put it up there and drive stuff to your channels. I think. Yeah, and they seem to. Um, uh, they seem to host a lot of public access stuff, which is kind of interesting. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about it yet. I mean, I, I don't even really, um, I don't even really understand it enough yet to say like, oh yeah, let's do it. But, um, but I'm definitely um, intrigued. I mean, it seems like kind of an interesting way to do it. I mean, I really do eventually. If I don't know. I mean, it's it's gonna take me a while to figure out how to do it properly. But I really would like to do some sort of sound only version of Logger Dome at some point. Like either make a, um, you know, because there there are public radio stations I could put it on. There's all kinds of art podcast kind of. There's so much of that going on right now. So it might not be a bad idea to go that route and you know maybe I don't know maybe put it on iTunes or something for free or. Um, I, I really have to. I'm really very behind in finding these other venues. So um, you know, I always appreciate the suggestions. Certainly. Well, and then there's a, a whole list of different, I guess, internet personalities that I would love to see engage with Gary personally. Ooh, I mean, and one yeah. of the one of the key ones that I would love to see is David Brin because he's very out there in social media. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's a sci-fi writer, but, you know, he's a physicist. He's a bright guy, but he's one of these, you know, he's a, essentially a transhumanist. I and, have heard you talk about him before. He seems pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we're still doing a transhumanism uh, virtual reality episode, but there's him and then there's this guy, Slaughter Dyke, that I, I don't know if I, we can get, but he actually has had another uh, philosophy TV show, apparently. But in a different country, and he's he's a transhumanist, and and um, so yeah, I mean, I, I you know, maybe you should he, just call. Do you know if he's more on the side of transhumanism than virtual reality, or this this guy that you're mentioning? 
Well, if you want to do all that, you can find all the bad vices in the Amazing Atheist. Just go and talk to him about something on his podcast. We get all the the uh, things you need out of him. He's got all the bad things, all in one, and he's pretty famous on the internet. So believes in all sorts of crazy nonsense. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he wants. He 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 was uh you know Job of the Hut and was shot in episode two. So technically, he has been on the show, um, but in in Glynos cartoon form. Um, but yeah, I don't think he wants to talk to us, quite frankly. Yeah, because he's a loser, but that's besides the point. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this whole networking thing is a little bit of a game, but um... it's very much a game. It's it's and it's so much more complicated than it used to be. Oh my yeah, god! You know, you know, when I was doing my Dragon Ball videos, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna get fully on this topic, I promise. But it was there was just like a couple of sites, you know, that you put links to, and now there's so many, and there's so many that are just mobile apps now, and it's such a pain in the ass. I mean, I, I part of me likes it because it's kind of like a video game, but it's video so games, stupid yeah. the way it's all broken up. Yeah, I just don't think there's. It's so hard to get content. Um, you know, it, it, it's not indexed all at all. So, I mean, I'm noticing that with these physics videos, because I've been looking around at different things, and there's really good educational videos that people have made, and they got like 25 views, and you're like, this is insane, you know? I mean, the guy made a pretty good video, and it's got nothing, and it's just. Oh, it's crazy! It. I mean, I talked to a um, an actual like video archive this week because I was trying to maybe get a job there. I don't know. Um, but, you know, like, the, like just on every level, like, nobody is thinking about how any of this is going to be saved. I mean, people are still so focused on, like, how we're going to save all the VHS and these rare, you know, I mean, it's, especially so much of this mobile stuff. I mean, I when it comes to Instagram and all that kind of stuff, man, that, that all that crap is just going to go so hard. Um and you know, so I'm I'm kind of focusing on I, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to focus on just a few things. I really like Vine. I definitely want to put stuff there. Maybe Instagram because they do allow 10 second videos. But um, yeah, I don't know. There, there's so many. I you know I I don't I still don't understand how Reddit works. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I there, just have to, find a, I have to find a strategy on Reddit related to you know antinatalism, ethelism, eph human extinction movement. So, I mean, at one yeah. point, not long ago, maybe two months ago, there was one uh, Reddit that was on antinatalism that pretty much you know almost made the front page. You know, just in terms of the number of views and how pe interested people were in for that day. That's the problem. It was just hype. Yeah, I think I I think I saw something about that, and it had some kind of connect. Well, you know, since this, uh, what is that TV show, True Detective? I mean, I know it makes a lot of us cringe, but that did put antinatalism in a lot of um, news articles and stuff. I mean, it it did kind of make it more visible, and I know a lot of that was happening on Reddit or through Reddit, and there was a lot of chatter about the topic on Reddit. So I'm I'm wondering if it was kind of fueled by that. I mean, I just don't. I, I I feel like I kind of missed an opportunity to um, make certain connections that way. Um, you know, in terms of shoving links in the right place. Um, but it's just so it's just so hard to care about some of these conversations because they're so um, they're so off topic and they're so. I mean, you're just you know it's just going to end in trolling and stupidity so easily. Um, that it's kind of it's it's just tricky to know what to invest your time in, especially when there's just so many sites to consider. Well, I, I mean, I have to say, I've really enjoyed like uh, Gary's one-on-one -on -one discussions with uh, uh, Les Knight and with George uh, Ortega. That kind of format, you know. I don't know if it has any impact, bringing more eyeballs to. The work. Yeah, well, that's the trick of it. Is to you know, still we we're. Still Still, kind of struggling with the, you know, how, how do you format it into something that almost anybody can eat? You know, you're making, you're trying to make some sort of universal food. <laughs> you know, it's hard to do. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, Reddit, there's a, I actually do quite a lot of reading on Reddit, and there's actually a, there's a subreddit um, called Child Free. That's 
like surprisingly popular. I think it's it's got over fifty thousand subscribers. So I'm thinking maybe, but but that's more of a I hate children kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's not it's not philosophical, but I think that it might be possible. You know, you've got people who are kind of they've kind of arrived at the same place of not making children, although for different reasons. So maybe there there's a way to sort of marry those two things together. Yeah, I, I saw that. No, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. And the, the thing is, there's a lot of this child-free stuff going on. I mean, it's Instagram, yeah. Twitter, Facebook, tons of shit on Facebook, tons of shit on Twitter. And I just, it's um, it's funny because there's you can tell there's sort of a weird hostility towards turning it into a philosophical topic, which, I mean, I don't find surprising. But some of them kind of do know that I've actually been banned from quite a, bun a, a bunch of like child-free um, sites on both Twitter and and Facebook, uh, just because I, you know, I thought I thought posting the link to episode one would be kind of relevant. I mean, it's a discussion between two different antinatalists. I mean, it's it relates to them, but um, yeah, I I don't know how to spark their interest because I just don't. I, I guess I don't. Sh there, there is this huge difference that I just don't know how to compensate for. It's really yeah. a challenge. Really is, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. I... Sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I was just going to say, uh, you know, there, there is this big, you know, it's not antinatalism, and, but I don't exactly know what it is, I think, is, is the thing that I struggle with. And I sort of stumbled into the child-free thing. But then after a while, it took me a little while to realize that it's just like people complaining about <laughs> like noisy kids and how much money they save by not having kids and just really sort of practical things. So I don't really know what... Yeah, but means. it's practical from like some kind of hedonistic point of view. So yeah, it's not like... Yeah. There's no it's not sense. even an argument. Like it's not even in words a lot of times. Like a lot of the child-free stuff is just pages of these fucking... Meme. I don't know what you call those. It's like you know, just like the the little image, and then like maybe a couple of words, and it's like so reduced down to just like a a ribbing or a. I mean, it's, it's really it's really on some sort of very. I don't even know what to call it. I, just, I really don't. Well, but it doesn't leave it doesn't leave a lot of room for conversation. Well, I agree with you. I mean, I think it is an ongoing and growing theme in the culture. It's an underground still. But it's been around for a while, and there are there are even some celebrities who have come out essentially saying that they're pro child free. They're concerned about population, that kind of thing. And it even made you know one of the uh, front pages of Time last year, the issue itself. So it is something that's ongoing, and I think it's a key um, place for an antinatalist philosophy to introduce itself. So I definitely think that is an you know important and powerful place to look, and that it is something that is continue going to continue to grow, and it's in even in places like China and India. Yeah, I, I think I think it's an it, like a um, it's like an it, it's an incoherent spectrum, but there's definitely a real spectrum there, and there should be. I mean, if we really if if we really could find a way of getting all these different types of antinatalism to communicate with each other. It would really be a good thing. I mean, and and it's just. I mean, part of it is I just don't know. You know, outside of doing the viral thing, I just don't know how to get such. A, I don't. I don't know how to get people to communicate that way. I don't. I don't even. I don't know enough about the internet. I don't know enough about all social media. At the end of the day, you yeah. Know, well, I don't, I don't think really they're. How to connect people. I don't think they're compatible philosophies, though. So I don't think you can, you know, there's necessarily any real communication to be done. I mean, it's like the, it's like somebody who's vegetarian for health reasons. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's there's no connection. There's no common ground. And I'm just saying that a lot of these child-free things are just about being a selfish cunt, and it's not about anything else. It's just about having a free lifestyle and saying, yeah, I can go wherever I want and do whatever I want, and I don't need kids, and so. But that's not the subject of antinatalism. It doesn't have anything to do with it. Like I said, it's, it has no philosophical root. So how can you? How can it be at all applicable? 
I think that I, 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 I can't possibly disagree with that. At the same time, I so, my feeling on it is that ethylism, antinatalism, as, as we've come to understand it, is so young. And it's such an unknown quantity. Like, to think about these things in a truly philosophic sense is such an unknown quantity as far as what you can think about that I just, I just feel like, okay, somewhere in that pool of these people thinking very unphilosophically, there's got to be more people that could go, oh. Well, well, I know. Let's use the example of the right to die, right? So they, they think in Oregon they solved the problem because, you know, 15 people a year get to die in some sort of humane way. Right? right. It's obviously not a solution. I'm just saying that when people start talking about child free, then that just brings up this idiotic notion that, well, somebody has to pay Social Security in the future, and we can't have declining population, and we can't, you know, I mean, it's like ends up like Japan where they start, yeah. you know, offering people $10,000 to have a kid. You know, I mean, you're going to end up with a society that starts paying people to have fucking kids. Yeah, I guess I'm just not thinking of I mean, I guess just the way I'm thinking about it is that if I'm if if I'm if I'm thinking of the charge of trying to expand the, the movement, so to speak, that's where I go fishing. I, I, I go fishing to the people that are halfway there. Right. And yeah, that, well, I, that's I, just kind I, of my thing. I go about fishing it. with the people that are halfway there in some sort of social responsibility way. So yeah, I can yeah. say that this guy with the anti-humanism movement thing, the human extinction movement, well, he has some hope because he has a philosophical perspective. But somebody who just has a selfish perspective, well, that ain't going to go anywhere. Maybe, more, yeah, maybe more times. I don't know. I just... I, I don't disagree with you, Gary, but I would like to think that there's some subset of those groups that are open to philosophical ideas that will further inform their choice and their intuition. And they'll be... Well, well, I think there might, might be some pragmatic value if you can get them behind some notion of ending tax subsidies for having kids. You know what I'm saying? If they're hostile enough to, like, welfare and all that kind of stuff, then you might be able to use that energy you know, to push yeah. some agenda where you stop subsidizing people for having kids, especially poor people. We're getting there, but it'll be too late, in my opinion. Yeah. That's a good, but that's a good angle. I never think of doing things on that kind of practical level just because I, I'm not as knowledgeable about, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it, that, there might be some, some, some hope there. Um, you know, if you can push them towards, if you can, if you can make well, it. I'm saying you have to take it to the worth. It might be, it might have some political value. It might not have any philosophical value because obviously, you know what I'm saying. I mean, there's just so many nihilists, and these sound like people who are just these nihilist motherfucking cunts, and you know they're useless to yeah. any kind of you know philosophical conversation because philosophy begins and ends with what do I want and that's exactly the problem with the natalists is what do I want so in a sense they're the same kind of enemy they're both acting out of their personal choice and the thing as, yeah, no it's yeah, true I mean, it some that, that, that will always be true that will always be true all I all I love to see is a, a so favor push them towards if you, if you can make it well, into I'm a Strange. Somebody, I guess, is entering the room in a in a well, flash. Yeah. Well, Google doesn't let you do it any other way, right? <laughs> it just doesn't let you enter the room any other way. But Nick nihilist, the guy in just came in the room is Nick Nihilist. So yeah, we can talk about nihilism now. Oh, he kicked him. <laughs> well, I just want to say real quick. I really, I was disappointed that no vehement people came out of the woodwork to give their opinion, I mean, it, it on, on the interview, because I did post it, like, everywhere that wow. vehementalists might look. Um, I just, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange bunch. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's true. Um, I, I just I can't... I, I, it really is hard to put your, my finger on a lot of these other sub, subsets of antinatalism and the people that inhabit them. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess you could say that some people have an incomplete philosophy, and that at least has some hope, but people who have no philosophy have no hope, so I guess maybe that's a way to define it. 
but um, I mean, obviously, people who think that uh, you know nature is wonderful, you know, and but and hate humans. I mean, obviously, they've got half of it right, but you know, there's nothing lovable about nature. Nature's gross. Mm. Yeah, I mean, nature created us. That's obviously a flaw, <laughs> an issue. Mm. Yeah. It's too hot and woodsy. Yeah, I'd rather just stay inside in the air conditioning. Or the heating. <laughs> Screw nature. Well, well, I'm just saying we lose sight of the fact that most of the organism suffering on in planet Earth isn't a human, you know. So we're so focused on this human dilemma, problem, uh, angst, and all that kind of crap. But, I mean, every day, you know, all these sentient creatures, you know, I mean, rats only live three years. I mean, just think how many lifetimes are cycled through and how much misery and horror is endured and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, that kind of... I just don't know how people can't be somewhat aware of that. I mean, to, to sit there and just give nature a buy or a pass, <laughs> you know, it's just so bizarre to me. Yeah. It's the same as the meat eaters. Obviously, it's about making the human happy. Who cares about the suffering of the animal? Animal. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm just saying, to think that you fix the problem on planet Earth by getting rid of stupid humans, I mean, fuck, that's a long way from fixing the problem. Well, I grew up watching uh, Marlon Perkins' Wild Animal Kingdom on Sundays, and it was always this romantic or funny music that played when the animals hunted each other and killed and ate each other. But if they put on horror music, we'd have a different generation right now. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have the same impressions about Wild Kingdom. It was kind of um, earthy. You know, I mean, it didn't it didn't sugarcoat it that much. I mean, it wasn't like Walt Disney or something. I mean, Disney sugarcoated it, right? I mean, it was always like little bears loose in the kitchen or something. Sure. Yeah, you know, where... And folklore as well, yeah. You know, Wild Kingdom was kind of um, brutal. Yeah, I think and something else that people seem to miss when you're talking about factory farming. It's about not having more animals be born to be factory farmed more than anything. Well, I know I'm saying that obviously the, the issue of vegetarianism is, you know, it's an interesting um, symbolic statement, but I'm just saying it's a practical matter. It's a tiny, minute percentage of animal harm. That might be something that changes in the near future because our uh, carbon footprint as societies continues to grow and there's going to be more impetus to promote alternatives to animal food products. Unfortunately, we're totally exporting our model right now to, to China. Well, I'm just saying that, yeah, the, the, the people of the world are not, um, the, the smart people are acquiring these sophisticated cultured habits, but again, it's not necessarily for the right reason. So, you know, vegetarianism is winning with people with money, but yeah, in the poor parts of the world, they're still doing things the stupid way. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, meat consumption is up, not down, so. And it's going to continue to go up. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a horror show times 10 to what it is right now. I don't doubt that. But at the same time, I wouldn't doubt that our society begins to turn and we'll see some alternatives and we'll see the promotion of alternatives. So we're going to get a bunch of PR through the media about alternative, you know, eating habits. And it'll be pushed by the government and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't see that happening. But regardless, I, again, I'm still going to argue that it really just doesn't matter because vegetarianism is more about principle than it is practicality. Yeah. I mean, it's not a practical solution. If everybody became vegetarian tomorrow, that's not going to save all the fucking animals in the world from the stupid, futile, horrible right. life they're going to live. I, I agree. Uh, 
Hey, but it's some suffering, and that's all we can ask for sometimes. Yeah, that's just the janitor duty. Do what you can do. I mean, it's just well, going to. Again, I'm just going to argue that it's such a minor part. It's a minuscule part of the equation. So I'm just saying, yes, it's nice for principle's sake, but it just as a practical matter, yeah, you're you're you know you've left the you know you you cured the common cold and you know left cancer rampant. Yeah. Well, I struggle with that question. I mean, because it is a very negative, pessimistic view of the future. <clears throat> but it also adds up to the look. We keep doing. I, I, you know, I made a video where I said blood footprint. Yes. You know, we got to quit thinking in terms of a carbon footprint. We got to think in terms of a blood footprint. What is the price of our fucking existence? And the biosphere is the price of our existence. Right. The biosphere is feeding us in more ways than you know, eating meat. It's feeding us and that all these animals must live through this idiotic cycle to produce the atmosphere that sustains you. I mean, they're all being victimized in a sense to perpetuate the stupidity of the human race. Yes. Or just life itself, even if we weren't... No, I'm just saying that, yeah, I mean, well, I'm just saying the only... Humans would be a lot less enthusiastic about planet Earth continuing if I was to say they were all going to die tomorrow of AIDS, right? If I said tomorrow all the humans are going to die of a virus, there'd be plenty of people who could say, okay, then it doesn't matter whether the planet gets blown up or not. Sadly, yes. I wonder, though. I wonder, is that would that just be America? I mean, how many cultures would, would, would have that view? I don't know. Well, I don't, I'm saying it's probably, in my opinion, it's the right view, right? I, I, mean, I want them to be disconcerned because I don't want them to sit there and say for some idiotic reason, well, we must preserve it even so there's no humans because it's life. Well, that would be stupid. So, Gary, the last time we chatted, I, I'm going to go off the rails here. We can change the subject if you want, but I, uh, you you questioned whether there was any good reasons why I would su suggest that somebody like Sam Harris wouldn't be a viable candidate. I had to think about that. I read Sam Harris's last book, and so he's Jewish, he's an academic, and he did psychedelics. <laughs> Those are my primary <laughs> reasons. Well, I know, but Obama is a, you know, a pot yeah. smoking, cigarette smoking, potentially a homosexual. Yeah. So what? Yeah, so, so uh, well, yeah. So it gets a little crazy when we get into well, the... I'm just saying, well, I mean, we elected, a, well, we, we, elect, we elected a pot smoking black man, then I think we could handle a Jewish intellectual. Okay. And, and well, so that's my question is, I'm, that would be great if we could. I agree with you a million percent. So um, then the other elements were, uh, would he have to run as a third-party candidate? And I looked it up, and, you know, there's been recently this uh, show on the Roosevelt's on PBS, and, you know, F or, or, um, Teddy Roosevelt ran as an independent and, and was elected. There was one other guy, I can't think of his name, who became president as an independent. But maybe well, the time I has come. I don't think Sam Harris would have any problem running as a Democrat. Yeah, so Sam Harris, what do you think of, uh, you know, in New York, Chris, Christiane Gillibrand? I saw her on C-SPAN the other day. Oh, the fuck that. She's a senator. It's all right. But when I watch her and the things she yeah. said... I mean, it just reminded me of some of the comments You're you made. You're fading out or something. Or I'm fading out. It's probably me. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's probably between 12 guy. I could hear him. Uh, dying. Fade to black. Uh, Whatever that means. Oh, I'm already black. Oh. Never mind. Never mind. Well, anyway, I don't know who that woman is, so I can't really comment on her, but I don't know who she is. 
I don't I don't follow the news much or especially local shit or anything really. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Between twelve guys sighing a lot. Yeah. 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 Well you seem to be pretty keen on politics. I can't hear you. You seem what? You seem to be pretty keen on politics. Well, I used to be. I mean, the themes are still the same, so, you know, it really doesn't matter. The faces change, but it's the same rhetoric forever. It's, the, it's, it's political theory, not up-to-date political events. <laughs> uh, well, pretty much. I mean, the, 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 the competing interests are pretty obvious and the entrenched special interests are pretty obvious so that part doesn't change and such and so forth and whatnot Yes, thank you. Oh, links, cool. Reddit, yeah, I can never figure out what Reddit, I can never really make it work for me, but I have to check it out sometime. Have you joined Twitter or Facebook? I can't figure it out. I can't do it. It's too oh, yeah. fast for me. Yeah, no, I don't do Twitter or Facebook either. I mean, you'd spread the Reddit's message. Just, a bullet, Gordon. Mm. just create a do not Gary, drop. I'm sorry, Tween. Go ahead. I just said make a do not do not God Facebook page. See if that works. <laughs> make it a business page. Yeah. Well, what, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Yeah. Gary, did you ever use Usenet? Nope. I did lots of message boards, but I never, I never did Usenet or whatever the other one was. I did Usenet. <laughs> no, you used to use Net. Is it time to go to bed now? Soon enough. Mm. Well, the sun's not going to be get, getting up until later now, so, I mean, if you want to wait until, like, 7 o'clock in the morning. <sighs> yeah, I don't really want to. I just figure, you know, whatever, I'll put in my time, and uh, then I go to bed, and then I can get some work done or something, maybe. If I waste too much time in here, then I won't be able to get anything done. Also, everything's lagging kind of strangely at the moment. Time is a strange beast. Whatever that means. <clears throat> yeah, it's probably a cliche I could live without. Time is timeless. Yeah. Einstein said time doesn't exist. What do you think about that, Gary? Well, I think distance does, but yeah, that's the trick of it, right? Time that's is cool. the consequence of distance, so... Um, Time's an illusion of distance. And well, I'm just saying that, you know, theoretically, I suppose you could say that time itself doesn't exist, but, you know, if anything travels distance, if there's distance between things, there's time. <laughs> so, that's right. the catch. Well, it's, it's the movement. The distance, yeah. Looks like somebody's running a uh, subreddit called Antinatalism. And it's got a lot of your stuff on there, Gary. No, oh, that's interesting. Whatever a subreddit <coughs> is, but uh, that doesn't sound too good. It's like the basement of Reddit. The basement well, of a, the, subreddit, a subreddit, a subreddit is, I'd say, um, 
you know, it's it's a it's just a, like a, a version of Reddit. It's like a forum for a particular subject. Yeah. So it's well, like a whole like, other site, or it's or it's like a sub forum, like on forums you have a sub forum. Um. So it's like if you go to forum, imagine it as being like a different a different like board within a forum, basically. So anyone can go and start a subreddit, which people can subscribe to or unsubscribe to, and then they get it. Then they'll get things out of that subreddit into their like front page. It puts it all into a feed. But not everybody can make a regular Reddit. Everybody can make a subreddit, but they can't make a regular page on Reddit. No, it's it's um, the term is actually not very good because it's. Reddit is just made up of subreddits. Hey, can I ask you a question? Does the does the Google video chat end when you leave the room? And mend them? No. Oh, it just keeps going. Yes. Oh, well, I thought it because they Nothing upload it to you. It purposefully. I just thought because they upload it to YouTube, but it quits out right when the host leaves. Hmm. I don't know. Frozen. I think he. I think you have to click off on the live button or something like that, and then it doesn't necessarily close the room, but it ends the recording. I, I yeah. Something like that. So usually I monitor the Do Not God room while I'm here, mm. and I don't know if there might be people trying to get into the room. That's a problem. You keep this room. Oh, you are you. You're in. You mean tiny chat? I'm so sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah, in the tiny chat room. So I usually try to steer people over here, but the problem is there. Sometimes there's people in tiny chat that are trying to get in here, and they there's not enough room. There's not enough docs. There's only ten people allowed. So I wish there was a way to monitor who wants to get in and talk to Gary. Well, people want to talk to you. <laughs> Um, how, what has it been like in Tiny Chat the last month, month and a half? Am I, like, am I, am I still here? Just for yeah, you're here, Gary. Okay. Just want to make sure. No, you're there. No, no. Well, I mean, I guess I could just. Uh, well, there's not. There's only. There's less than ten in here now, right? One, two, three. Four, five, six. Yeah, it's only seven people. Eight people with me. Yeah, eight. Okay. Anyway. Um, sorry, go ahead. Potato chips. I don't know. No, I was... Oh, Hazy left. Okay, no, I just was asking him what what the room has been like because I haven't really... I haven't been able to get in there. Yeah. Now he's back. <clears throat> I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, for curiosity's sake, I'm just curious if uh, you've been showing up. Yeah, I'm just curious if you've been showing up. Hey, there's Mr. Natri. Because there's a simple fact, there's no you without me. Can't hear him, though. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the rough. You're exactly right. But there was no you without me. Oh, what the hell that is. Yeah, Natch, if you're speaking, I it's like I can hear you off at a very far distance. And you're very tinny. I think he's talking to somebody else, and his mic is open or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd like to know if he, if, if Natch found out anything more about the problems you were having with your channel on Tiny. Because yes, people, I, I did. But what you're hearing is I'm in tiny chat as well. Okay. All right, Natch. Yeah, well, it doesn't really work to be in both rooms at once for me. Well, I have, it, I have it on my iPad. It turns out there are four people, including, unfortunately, sub-DNA, are in there talking, videoed up, and there's about 20 people in there. Well, good. That's pretty cool. <laughs> for them. But I mean, you can't leave the mic open, um, Mr. Natural. Because it's yeah, it's too noisy in here. Um, I mean, it's just noise in here. So how's the uh, tiny chat been the last few months? 
Well, uh, I post the uh, MP3 so you could listen to it if you cared to. But yes, it's been about like this. It's been kind of strange and spotty, and sometimes there's a conversation worth having, and but most of the time there's not. Are you only getting about 40 people in the room? I don't know. I don't count them, but uh, it seems like there's more than that. But you know, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Not enough. <laughs> you know. There was like sixty or seventy last week, I think. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta have. Mm, who knows? Who knows about these numbers though on Tiny Chat, especially with like that be around. Gotta have many millions to be make it worthwhile. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Okay, I don't deserve many millions. But. Can we like end this? Cause I'm getting tired. Well, then go to bed, you stupid fuck. I mean, what do you mean? Can we end this? That's just so hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you can leave anytime you want to. So, it's good to see yeah, you again, Dwo. We're kind of see you. You can see distance. me in the darkness. You can see me from a distance. Yeah, not really. I'm uh, staring at you, but you're not staring at me. Yeah. Well, whatever. But anyway, yeah, I do think I'll bail just because it's. Uh, Why do you want to bail? Good, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, that's the reason. Um, See, I'm playing a game. You know, I'm playing one of those sight games. But it doesn't matter. I'm not going to pay any attention. So fine, go ahead and play it all you want. Uh, anyway, it's good to see a Wayne guy, and. Uh, you know, there's such folk who I can't see your icons anyway. And Wayne's is the only icon that works because he's been here from the beginning, which is funny. Um, everybody else is, you know, invisible. But anyway, Norwegian guy and uh, Mr. Natural and Hazy guy and Pearl Films and Bathtub guy and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. You name uh, me. I think I said tween guy or something like that. Tween. Mm -hmm. You too, Gary. Have a good evening. By the way, uh, when is the third antinatalist show going to be um, edited together? Have any idea? Well, probably in a few days. <laughs> the first edit, anyway. Few so, days? My God. Yeah. You know, as I gotta, soon as possible. Yeah. You know, we're working on it. Yeah, I was going to put up the file, but I want to do a little editing just because my camera work wasn't brilliant, so I want to kind of fix it up a little bit. Um. Gary, can you upload the full version somewhere, though, just so I can see it? I'd really like to have it. Yes, yes. I was going to put it. <laughs> okay, all right. right. It's going to upload to the website. I just didn't get around to it, but. Um, you can yeah. just put it. You can just put it on the Vloggerdome channel privately if you want. Yeah, I know, but I guess that would be. Well, what's the disadvantage of that? Well, then you just end up with a crappier version of it, and I no. don't. And I don't think I want to make it public. Until I edit it, so well, whatever. Either way, yeah, you can put it on the FTP too. Just put it in the show three file. Yeah, something like that. I'll do one of those things. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we had a little technical difficulty, so the ending doesn't finish, and then, um, like I said, I just want to fix my camera work. Uh, Have a nifty morning and such. So yeah, okay, whatever, fine. Yes, I'll try to do that. Um, and uh, whatnot, and uh, so yeah, I'm getting out. I'm gonna stop. See you next week. And yeah, have a good, have a good night. Yep, likewise, and good have day. Good night, and sorry, and so forth. And, and, uh, it works. <laughs>